I'm already having an amazing day. Yes. It's Wednesday, and the New York Jets just won their week one game. <laughs> oh, hey. yeah. Against what the know. Buffalo Bills. I couldn't be having <laughs> a better day right now. You wish you were me just for the moment, because I just got 1-0, a divisional win against the Buffalo Bills. I will explain why in just one second. It is the Carton Show. That guy right there is David Jacoby. This handsome fella right there is my main man. And his name, of course, is Victor Cruz. And this handsome son of a gun is Antonio Cromartie. You guys are getting along now? We're good. I don't have to separate you at all. It was my fault. Uh, <laughs> you are going to Out hear the, the name. Out the I'm just saying gate. right now, you are going to hear the name Kyle Wilson. <laughs> Mentioned today <laughs> with impunity <laughs> multiple times by this gentleman right here. And I'll show you the video of that later in the show. Oh, but it is Wednesday. Man. Let's get started off with a little something we like to call Headlines. All right, so uh, first off, congrats oh, yeah. to Dalvin Cook. Became a dad a couple days ago. Uh, Dalvin Jr. was born healthy and happy. So uh, send our thoughts out to the Cook family this amazing time in his life. And he also practiced with the New York Jets yesterday. Amazing. Feels like he's a part of the club now. There he is in a Jet jersey, and it looks good, good. doesn't it, Antonio? Oh, it looks really good. It looks really good. That's what I love. But I, I'm going to talk about Dalvin for a second and what he brings to the table. Yeah. Like, you got to think about this. This is one of the best running backs that Aaron Rodgers has had in his career. All the way around from his the, the mindset that he brings to it. Um, and I think what it's going to create for this offense is it's going to be difficult for defensive coordinators to try to actually game plan because now Dalvin Cook can add it to the run, I mean, say to the run game or the passing game. Yeah. And he's a great block in the backfield. So when you look at that, I mean, uh, to me, he's one of the best backs that uh, Aaron Rodgers has had in his whole entire career. And I think this is what's going to make the offense difficult to try to adjust to. Look, it's a big like deal. That. You know, the New York Jets also recognize Brees Hall coming off the torn ACL. Yes. Just over a year ago, happened in October against the Denver Broncos. And what Salah told us a couple weeks ago, he's on a pitch count. Yeah. Running backs don't come back in under a year. Adrian Peterson to the side. And now it's a one-year deal. So the future is still uh, Brees. But you have a rock star running back. And that's another dimension of this offense that makes it very hard to stop. What a luxury. Uh, just a luxury to have a pass-catching dynamic running back that can run the ball between the tackles and catch the ball outside of the tackles. You can line him up anywhere and he can make plays for your offense and be a safety valve for Aaron Rodgers. It's just another playmaker to add to that roster. All right, let me go to headline number two, and this is why I'm so excited today. I never root for injury because that would make me a bad guy. And while my heart oh, might be black, I am not a bad guy. That being said... When an opposing player's out, I don't cry about it, Antonio. Von Miller on the pup list. He is going to be out the first four weeks of the season, Jacoby. And that includes, by my math, week one against the New York Jets, meaning no pass rush against the New York Jets. Lock that game up as a big fat W for the New York Jets. The dirty secret about this game is both teams struggle with protection. Both teams struggle with protection. You hope that you have Von Miller available to try to take advantage of that. If there's one weakness in the Jets' offense. If there's one soft spot, one Achilles heel, it is the offensive line, and not having Von Miller is going to be significant for this game, which is the biggest game of the Open. Now, amazingly, last year, he missed the last five games, obviously, the regular season and the playoffs. They went 5-0. and but their production in regards to quarterback hurries and quarter and sacks, obviously, went down almost by a full sack a game. Day, yeah. So they were able to overcome it, and they won those last five games. But they are a different defense without Von Miller, even in his mid-30s. Absolutely. He's a guy that dynamically gets after the quarterback. Understand, and not only that, from an offensive perspective, you got to account for him differently. When you're game planning, you have to know exactly where he is on the football field. You know on third and longs and third down situations, he's going to be pinning his years back coming after the quarterback and someone that has to be accounted for for the offense and that just changes your mindset so I think not having him changes things but we all know we don't, they don't need Von Miller until playoff time right I mean you so can't go 0-4 and, yeah. and like that's why I want to bring up the fact they were 5-0 and yes. with him once he got hurt but it does change the entire dynamic of that defense it puts more pressure on their cornerbacks and a guy like Jordan Poyer you know his safety because less pressure on the opposing quarterback more time to throw more deep opportunities. Definitely. I think when you're missing a guy like Von Miller, I think the defense coordinator now you got to figure out how to be creative with adding pressure. 
uh, to the quarterback because, yes, the offensive line is weak, but it's not the whole offensive line. You, you're talking about your edges. You're trying to figure out how can you get your edges right on the offensive line and create that and create pressure around that way because I just feel uh, we, we have a guy like Von Miller that's out. You don't have that true edge pressure, so now you got to try to add either nickels, safeties, and add other sort of type of pressures to try to get to the quarterback. So, I mean, you're looking at a situation where – they still can win without Von Miller in the first. It's still a very good football we game. We have to love those yeah. dude, those blitzers. Send those nickels and corners, baby. <laughs> yes, I love those. I love those. Yeah, especially on your own one yard line. <laughs> <laughs> more on that later in the show. That was, sure. was covered too bad. Uh, 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 brings me to headline <laughs> numero trace. That's three in Yiddish. And uh, here's the deal: New England's falling apart already. Uh, they had their cut downs like everyone else did yesterday. And amazingly, as of right now, this is going to change most likely later today but as of right now macaroni jones is the only quarterback on the patriots roster zappy gone malik cunningham gone i want his family dead i want his kids dead i want it's the untouchables you know what i'm doing I know. and i think victor cruz okay. that this is another little mental gymnastics game that Bill Belichick is playing. He cut all the other quarterbacks in an effort to build Mac Jones's confidence up. We believe in you, kid. We believe in you so much. You're the only quarterback we got. Is, is that what they're doing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm a little confused by it, at least initially. Um, I do understand that Mac Jones is inevitably their guy, I guess, for this year. Yeah, but they, no doubt. they have to bring in a viable backup here. Preferably a veteran guy that's been there before that understands Colt the game. Colt McCoy, a guy like I, that? I guess so. And then you kind of look at the wire, kind of look who's out there. There's no real guy that stands out to me. Colt is probably one of the few. But it's just interesting to see where they're going with this and why they only chose to keep Mac and who they decide to bring. That'll be the tell. Yeah. Who they decide to bring in that will compete with Mac and make sure to keep that fire lit up under him so that he can go out there and be the best version of himself. Jacoby also goes to what you were saying yesterday. You know, Dallas got Trey Lance for a fourth round pick. Yeah. New England doesn't have a backup. Somewhat surprising after the fact, to be fair about it, that they didn't make a run at Trey Lance. It's, I, I have blind faith that Bill Belichick knows what he's doing. But I this know. is head scratching. <laughs> this is head scratching. Because Bailey Zappi played over Mac Jones last year. He came in for a healthy Mac Jones yeah, last played year. Played well. And they and he won played pretty two well. Games. And Malik Cunningham showed some flashes, albeit in the preseason, of being a great athlete, a Swiss Army knife, the type of player that Bill Belichick likes to have on the roster yeah. just to line up at fullback and to return punts and do whatever weird Something. stuff Belichick likes to do. Yeah. It just seemed like these were two players that had value for the Patriots, and now they're, they're going to hope they last in the practice squad. And yeah, now the way it works, just, I don't want to get in the weeds on it too much. The, the report, the thought in New England is that they try to put both guys immediately on the practice squad, but right now in the moment, they're unrestricted free agents, and if any other team wants to take a run at them, they are available. Uh, so it's a bit of a risk if you think Bailey Zappi is a guy that one day could be a starting quarterback. Why not just keep him on the roster? He's not making any money. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we'll exactly. see what they do, right? Exactly. I mean, I think, I think when you look at it, too, I think the comments coming out, Zappi couldn't pick up the offense. Zappi was actually playing pretty good during the preseason. So how did he, how did he not pick up the offense? Yeah, I don't believe everything yeah, I, don't believe I read out of fans. Got to go get Coco Coco. Final headline. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, I've never read anything on OnlyFans. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> <They're fair. laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <They're fair. laughs> I cannot. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor is uh, unhappy uh, because uh, not only does he remain on the pup list, uh, he's also still a member of the Indianapolis Colts. They did not pull off a trade. Now, to be fair, I was, I was thinking this morning, you know, maybe we've had some of this wrong. You know, he did have ankle surgery, and he has not practiced a single down. Uh, since that ankle surgery, which is why he went on the pup list. Uh, he's claiming he's good to go and practice, but you know they're saying you're not yet. Doctors yeah. haven't approved him for that. Regardless of all that, he has to sit out the first four weeks now, and unless they trade him in October, he's going to be at least on the roster of the Indianapolis Colts, meaning there's a chance that uh, he doesn't play football at all this year. Yeah, and, and it just he just has no leverage. You know, it's just it, when you go into these negotiations or you go into things like this, especially as a running back, you want to have some leverage going into this. And the only leverage he does have is his play, uh, the, the high-level play that he's shown on the football yeah. field a year ago. So it's just a matter of, like, what can he do? How is he going to attack these next, uh, you know, these negotiations and how he's going to move forward? But it's just interesting because the running back market is just – 
awful right now, now. The only difference before we take a very quick break is that he does make his money this year. He gets about four million bucks in his contract. Yeah. It is still his rookie deal. This is not similar at all to Josh Jacobs or Saquon Barkley. He's going to get paid. It's an injury. He's on the pup list. He gets paid. Mm-hmm. Uh, but his future in Indianapolis is clearly very, very murky, to say the least. We got a great show for you today. We'll uh, get into all those topics more in depth throughout the program and coming up after the break. Robert Sala, my main man, some might say, my bold brother, that has been said, Uh, talked about how the New York Jets haven't accomplished anything just yet, other than, of course, their week one win against the Buffalo Bills. (laughs) Robert Sala is now playing the game. And I got to give my favorite coach credit for playing the game. All the hoopla, all the hysteria. I'm leading it, of course, for the New York Jets winning a (laughs) Super Bowl this year. And then you look at the first six weeks. I'm not going to lie. It's tough. It's the hardest part of their schedule other than the Bills game, which is a guaranteed W now. But Robert Sala is trying now to play the other side of the coin, which is we haven't even played a game yet. Slow your roll. Here's the coach. We haven't done anything. Uh, we're going to face adversity. The road just got, it's going to get really freaking hard from here on out. And just the mindset and the adversity to fight through all that, to stay together and keep that positive mindset, uh, that's going to be the key. And, um, you know, so everything's been great now. But I think what we have is a group of guys who understand that. Yeah, listen, that's the truth. Of the anti Rex Ryan is what it is. Rex, uh, you know, embraced. Oh, you know, yeah. the predictions out of the Rex. thought of we're going to be fantastic. You know what he's like. You played for him. <laughs> and I, I understand what Coach is doing there. He thinks he's got a really good team. Cool. He knows he's got a really good team. But if I come out now as the head coach who's never had a winning season and I now verbalize the way we feel about ourselves in the locker room, that's going to potentially bite me in the rear end when we do have some adversity this year, like every team does, Vic. Which they will. They're yeah. going to have some adversity yep. very early on in this season and on both ends like if they go six and oh or three and oh in the first three games they're going to be adversity and trying to keep this team on the right ship and not smelling their own crap and thinking they're great and maybe lose the next couple and get on that on that type of skid keeping their energy levels yeah. high so but they're going to have some adversity in either way this season and we'll see how they respond they're a relatively young team still i mean aaron Rodgers is, is obviously one of the oldest guys on the team and been there and can kind of keep those guys level-headed but it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this team unfolds, and we're going to find out who they are very early on. I think the best part of this offseason, other than the obvious, you know, get Aaron Rodgers, get Alvin Cook, yeah. they go into the season healthy. Mm-hmm. They did not suffer like a lot of teams do, some kind of catastrophic injury to a guy that they were counting on to play, you know, a big amount of time. So, if nothing else, and every coach will tell you, their goal in the preseason is just get to September healthy. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is always trying to get into the season healthy. I think the adversity part of what you're looking at, I mean, they face a lot of adversity already with having Zach Wilson at quarterback. Yeah, thank but, you. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, but that's just, yeah, listen, I'm, I'm in therapy. But, no, no, it's not right. It's not right. That's, but like, look, that's like PTSD. <laughs> yeah. is what but it's like this. Big but look, time. I'm like this. Well, when you look at it, the adversity that I'm looking at right now is trying to figure out who are going to be your guys on the edge. Yes, you have uh, Makai, you have Dwayne that's coming back, but Dwayne hasn't practiced at all. Dwayne Brown, left tackle. Dwayne Brown hasn't practiced, uh, hasn't practiced at all. Makai is starting to get used to right tackle, so you're going to face adversity on the edges right now just because those Can guys Can I ask like a really you. stupid question? Go ahead. And this is my first stupid question of the 2023 season, all right? Hey, all right, let's get it. Right. Right. Take it over. I'm going to stand up. Take it over. I, I just need to understand this. I'm going to just come over here very quickly. If I'm the left tackle, yes. and i got to stand a little bit kind of like this direction, right? Okay. And go like this, right? <laughs> Why is that so much different than going like this to the <laughs> right it's side? Your feet. It's, it's your feet. feet. Which way you're kicking? Your feet. Are you kicking left your tackle? Feet. Yeah. Right tackle. No. You have to move. I did move my so feet. No, you did not. No. Right tackle. No. no. I bet why you move your feet when Von Miller's coming directly. Why is that so move, hard to transition? Move your feet when you have a pro, you, you have great pass rushers on the outside. Yeah. I don't know why that. You guys complicate stuff. I'm trying to tell you. Even like think about this. Even for me going from a right corner to playing left corner, it's my feet because how I plant and things come. Yeah. It's different. It's totally different. That's why I was one up in press. Let me ask you guys this, Vic. Let me ask you. When a head coach comes out, and he has fed the beast the last couple months, to be fair, and yesterday's really the first time publicly on the eve of the start of the season, he's like, look, we're going to lose some games. We're not going 17-0, and and we have to figure out how we deal with that adversity. Players listen to that, or people tune that out? 
I think we listen to it. I think we have to, especially in New York. There's no way to escape it. You know what I mean? You're going to hear it. You're yeah. going to see it on your Twitters and on your Instagram accounts, and you'll see the clips from it. But I, I love that it, he's real. Like, it's a real thing to say about your football team, and it's already adding, like, that level of I trust you guys. I'm going to be real with you guys, but prove me wrong. You know what I mean? Like, I'm here so you guys can prepare each and every week and prove me wrong. Come out here and be the best team that we can possibly be, and let's win some football. Newest member of the Jets, Dalvin Cook, did speak yesterday, and someone had a microphone in front of his face, so we have the audio. Here's Dalvin talking about what it feels like to be an official practicing member of the Super Bowl favorites. <laughs> yeah, now I feel like I'm part of the Jets now. Now I feel like I'm part of the team. It's just like, man, I've been, I came in for a few days, and I had to go back home and spend some time with the birth. Then I came back. And I was on the side just trying to, you know, get back from just sitting in the hospital. And it was just a lot going on. Now I get to dig deep into, you know, the playbook, you know, get familiar with the guys in the huddle and just have fun with, this, with the guys I got in the locker room, man. I'm ready to go. And, Jacoby, isn't it funny that everybody said that Dalvin Cook went back to South Florida because he was signing with the Dolphins? All those erroneous reports out of his Sun Sentinel <laughs> and all those other Dolphin talk wackos, when in reality, the man went home to see his first son born, right? There is a, yes, he signed with the Jets, but there's also the benefit of not signing with the Dolphins, as you mentioned. Yes. I think what he adds is the Aaron Rodgers of it all. It's also kind of what Salah said. You remember last season with Aaron Rodgers, he got – Early on, there was some adversity, and he was critical of some of his teammates, some of his young receivers. Publicly. And if you are Aaron Rodgers, and you're looking at this Jets roster when you sign, you're like, okay, we've got a great rookie receiver. We have a great rookie running back coming back from an injury. I'll take, I'll take Randall Cobb. I'll take right. Alan Lazard. And now they have Dalvin Cook. He's got veterans around him at those skilled positions yes. and rookie skilled position players around him. So adding Dalvin Cook is great to keep him away from the Dolphins, but also what it does is it helps Aaron Rodgers. gives him another veteran in that For position sure. so he doesn't have to deal with the, the young receiver. And it also helps in those rooms, in those specific meeting rooms individually, those receiver rooms. Randall Cobb is leading those meetings, I'm sure, with the position coach. I'm sure Lazard can provide input because he's been in this offense. Dalvin Cook is for sure leading those running back rooms. Right. And as he gets more familiar with the offense, he'll have more of a voice in there as well. So, like, those are beneficial not only as an offense in the huddle, but separately when they're in those respective rooms. Also, think about what's happened in the last 24 hours in the AFC East. The Bills get the news, which they obviously have yeah, known for a while. That, yeah. That's not breaking news yeah. in Buffalo, but it's official. Von Miller's out for the first four weeks. We know what that means. And imagine you're one of those long-suffering, die-hard Miami Dolphin fans. You guys haven't won uh, uh, you know, anything in a very, 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 very long time. And not only did you lose Dalvin Cook to the New York Jets, Oh, you didn't get Jonathan Taylor either. You wanted a running back. You needed a running back. And you didn't get a running back. Oh. <laughs> well, don't forget the Patriots. The Patriots have one quarterback. Oh. <laughs> Bad news for everybody except for the Jets. Yeah, the AFC East is now a two-team race. It's the Bills and the Jets. And the Jets will get off to a big W. But you just brought up the Patriots. And if you are just tuning in, good morning. And know this. Right now, in the moment. The New England Patriots only have one quarterback on their roster. His name is Mac Jones. So if there was any debate if Mac Jones was going to be the starting quarterback as Victor warms up the old chicken wing right there. Yeah, Mac Jones is the quarterback. Is there anybody else on the roster? Makes no sense. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what these, what's going on here. Like, what, what's the motive? Obviously, Bill Belichick, his mind works a lot differently uh, when it comes to football and the X's and O's and constructing a football team. But I'm interested to see where this goes. Well, you know what's funny about that? About, what, two weeks ago, uh, I, you know, in preparation for my job, I do a lot of reading. And uh, you <laughs> only fans. just call me and button up <laughs> off the air. Uh, not emails, per se, but, you know, other things that I like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I remember everyone was going crazy. Ooh, Malik Cunningham. Yep. Ooh, Bill Belichick's a genius. Good. He, he discovered yeah. the kid out of Louisville, That's right? That's how I felt. That's yeah. exactly how I felt. <laughs> Where is he now? Practice squad. Practice squad. That's not the yeah. wrong Maybe, That's not maybe practice squad. That's, that's nothing wrong. He'll be, on, he'll be on practice squad. Yeah. I, think, Look, they, I like this. They're going to bring Malik Cunningham back because what Malik Cunningham can bring to them is what Troy Brown Brought to them back in the early 2000s. A guy that can be a, a Swiss Army Knights on the offense side of the ball, can play quarterback, can play receiver, play running back, can line up at tight end, do anything as you want to him. So he can be that Swiss Army Knights. So why is he not on the team? 
Listen, right now it's not needed. I'm not worried about a guy they knowing I've heard of so much. I understand that, but it's not Cunningham. needed right now. They the need guy, a veteran guy. The thing I want to yeah. figure out now is the Mac Jones aspect of it. Uh, you know, this is a huge year for Mac Jones, right? Mm -hmm. He regressed, some people think, year one to year two. Obviously, they're not in the playoffs last year. And now you've put all that pressure. Don't forget, Robert Kraft a couple months ago said, if we're not in the playoffs, it's unacceptable. He didn't say we have to win a Super Bowl. He said we must be a postseason team. Well, if you're a Patriot fan, are you feeling uber confident that Matt Jones has just been given the job without any real competition and now there's well, not even a backup? Well, I'll say this. He actually has a real offensive coordinator this time. Bill O'Brien. <laughs> yes. yes. And all he the reports. Matt, done it before. Matt, Pat, Matt Patricia has yeah. a damn right. offensive coordinator. I think uh, Bill O'Brien is going to help him. I think he's going to get easier throws, put the ball where he needs to be. Uh, it's just it's right now it's just weird because right now you don't have a backup quarterback, right? A guy that can be behind a valuable backup quarterback. You've also said on the show in the past that while Bill O'Brien is competent yes. for sure, he runs a predictable offense at times. Very predictable. I mean, you, you, uh, playing against a guy numerous of times also in college football, but he, he everywhere everywhere your number one receiver is, no matter motion where he lines, you know exactly who's getting the ball. So. Our defense can figure that out. You take away all, a lot of options. Now he got to go to his number two read where you want him to go. It's really a crazy fall from grace, I think. You know, that a Bill Belichick Patriot team, they're not incompetent for sure. But this is, it just seems like we don't know what we're doing. Sure uh, uh, yeah, this is the first time where it feels like, what? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're seeing the construction of the team and you're like, wait, you got one quarterback right now? Like, who are you even looking at? What's your plan here? And the biggest thing, the reports I've heard from Mac out of New England is just that they're going to let him throw a little bit. Like, they, he has to start to play with some confidence and be that guy that he yes. was at Alabama. Granted, he was surrounded by studs at receiver. Right. But he needs to go back to that mindset, so to speak, and say, look, I'm the guy here. There's, no, there's nobody else on the roster. There's a level of so arrogance like you need to be a great quarterback. And let me own that and be that guy that they're looking for me to do be. We, yeah. Do we give Bill Belichick too much intellectual rope? Like, I don't think he's so. Earned the he's last earned it, though. year... He had Matt Patricia and Joe Judge as the sort of offensive, like, yeah. mind, small counsel. Like, and yeah. this year, he's got one quarterback as we're heading into week one. And we all are like, it's going to be okay. It's Bill Belichick. But are we sure that he still deserves well, that? Well, there's part? a chance coaches get CTE also. So, <laughs> perhaps he was running some drills without a helmet on. He got dinged a couple times. I don't know. <laughs> Much more on the disaster the Patriots season is oh, going to be God. a little bit later on in the program. But uh, Jimmy G spoke about the craziness out in San Francisco, and he could have predicted it because he lived it. What did the handsome quarterback say about the Trey Lance situation right after this? Congrats to uh, my main man, Victor Cruz. His alma mater put a 41 on the board about it. as they open up the season with a win. That's Jimmy it. Garoppolo, Raiders quarterback. He knows how weird things are in San Francisco. He was asked about the Trey Lance deal to Dallas, and this is what he said. What did you make of the, the Trey Lance trade to Dallas? Uh, you know, weird situation. Been a lot of weird situations over there in San Francisco. Uh, just to leave it at that. How do you think San Francisco's handled those, those quarterbacks? How do you think? How do you think? <laughs> How do you think they've handled them? Uh... <laughs> That's a high voice dude right there. Oh. Uh, how do you think things are going on in San Francisco, Jimmy G? Um, look, Jimmy was a part of it, right? Jimmy G uh, took them to a Super Bowl, went to NFC Championship games. They don't like him. They didn't give him the playbook to you last year. They weren't going to play him. Crazy. Then he's the starter. Then he goes, you know, whatever he goes, 4-0, and 4-1. Oh, and one. Then he gets hurt. Then blah, blah, blah. He's traded. He's not traded. He has witnessed the craziness yeah. in San Francisco. That being said, I don't think trading Trey Lance is the craziest part about it. He clearly was never going to be the Niner quarterback once Brock Purdy played the way he played, and then they acquired Sam Darnold. But you didn't know that leading up to this. No. Point. You didn't think that initially. You just thought Trey Lance was going to be the guy. There were certain times where I was like, okay, this is Trey Lance's year, coming off the injury you know, fighting his way back, Brock Purdy. Said, but this is, yeah. this was the couple of years where he was. This was going to be his team. Yeah. So I'm just trying to figure out where that went left. And Jimmy G's seen it all: NFC championships, Super Bowl appearances. Do you think they're going to bring him back? He leaves. But I think it's a testament, or more about the way that offense is designed under Shanahan, that isn't predicated on 
giving the ball to the quarterback and say, hey, go win it for us. Right. It's, hey, can you get the ball out to all of these wonderful pass catchers and athletes that we have on the perimeter and let those guys be the You know, it's funny. That was kind of the rub in a negative way, which I never thought was deserved for Jimmy G, which was they win in spite of him, right? But when you have the talent that we've talked about a lot this week in Kittle and uh, Samuel and Ayuk and et cetera, et cetera, and uh, the big fella left tackle and Nick Boats and a great team, Mm -hmm. it's unlike the way a lot of teams are built. Mm -hmm. The quarterback doesn't have to be the rock star. No, I think think when you look at it, the quarterback just has to manage. Bing. It's all about managing the game. If you have a great manager of the game, then you can go out and go win a lot of games because now you have your great defense that can go out and create turnovers and get a short field. You can do certain things on the offensive side to get your uh, your stars the ball, whether it's a screen or putting Debo in the backfield, uh, getting uh, Kittle, Kittle uh, the ball over the middle, yep. and certain things. And McCaffrey create, moving you know, around. You know, McCaffrey and just doing certain things. So it's all about game management. If I can win the field position battle and manage the game as a quarterback, we can win a lot of games. Yeah, I do think Jimmy G is right, and we all lived it. We watched it where they do some weird things, but they win a lot of games. So, no, it's kind of like when you're rich, you're eclectic. When you're poor, you're crazy. Yes. <laughs> That's kind of like San Francisco. <laughs> you, I, I, I just I always think about this offense. I think about all the things they dial up and how they put Debo in the backfield. They use juice check. Like they use a fullback like as a pass catcher. They split yeah. him out wide. They're, they're, yeah, they're just like mad scientists. When Mike McDaniel was there and Kyle Shanahan, we, we give them so much credit for being great coaches. But then you listen to Jimmy G, you're like, it has been a little weird over there. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, like, like yeah. and they had him on the team. And they didn't have him in training camp. And you traded three <laughs> first rounders to get um, like Trey Lance and you trade him. They didn't have a quarterback to finish the season last year. Exactly. They literally didn't have yeah. one. So now they're in the business of getting rid of quarterbacks they traded three first rounders to. I give them so much credit for what I see on the field. But there's a part of me that's like, huh. Maybe it's not all perfect over there in San Francisco. I will say this. The only time in Shanahan's era as head coach of San Francisco where one guy played quarterback every game, they went to the Super Bowl, and that was now four years ago, 2019. They've obviously had great success anyway because they've done a great job building a team with mad talent on both sides of the ball. All right, Trey Lance is now in Dallas. He showed up in Dallas. He spoke in Dallas. What did he say? <laughs> there you go. I really tried to not, you know, expect anything one way or another. Uh, but I, I can not say that when I heard Cowboys, you know, I had a big smile on my face. Uh, I was very excited to, to be here. Yeah, no, uh, for me, oh, like sorry. I said, I was very excited to be here. Um, Same thing. Coach backwards. McCarthy and, and the entire coaching staff. Uh, you can kill uh, man, that. I heard enough. Uh, he's very excited. He's very excited. He's excited looking to his left. He's excited looking to his right. He does look good in the Dallas Cowboy hat. He Here's why he's excited. Dak Prescott's in front of him. That's a guy that one day I can take the job from. But look, it's also a young quarterback who's now at a crossroads career-wise, not based on not playing well, based on injury. So there are times, you guys I'm sure have experienced this, where you just need a fresh start. Definitely. You need new eyeballs watching you play, new coaches trying to figure out what you do well, what you don't do well, and that's what he's getting in Dallas. Uh, I think so. I, and I, not only that, but I just think when you have a lot of pressure taken off you, you get a time to refresh your, your, yourself, your body, your mind, and you got guys that's around you that's going to give you the confidence in the team that that's just I mean, traded for you, so they're going to give you the time to develop. And, and there's I mean, no pressure now. That's what I'm, You're the third-string no quarterback. You no got pressure at until. all. Until. Yeah. Oh, until. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Until Dak Prescott starts the season off with four picks in the first two games, and then you're looking at Trey Lance to be like, "Hey, buddy, we need you to step up here." So I think Dak's in trouble here. I think, I think they brought uh, Trey Lance in to be someone to light fire under Dak and yep. say, "Hey, look, if you don't come out here and play like we want you to play and play like the leader of the Dallas Cowboys, we got a guy that's." That if he gets his stuff together and we and he wraps his head around this playbook, he could be something. You know what's crazy about that? I, I said it all week. I agree with you 100%, Vic. Mm-hmm. But nice. the, the missing part of that <laughs> is I actually feel bad now for Cooper Rush. Yeah. Cooper Rush should be the fire under Dak Prescott's belly. He should be the goose under his rear end. Because when he did play in regular season football games, they went 4-1. and one. Yep. So I, we're all looking at it, I think, through the prism of – the potential of Trey Lance and how a guy like that coming to the team, you know, is going to make Dak feel maybe ticked off or uncomfortable. 
But there's already a guy there that's proven he can lead the Cowboys to wins. Yes. I couldn't hear anything you said because I was still thinking about Goose under the rear end. Is that yeah. a saying? Is that saying? Is that something that, that people say? Is that something people say? It's a prison <laughs> saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, good point. Uh, when you, when you watch that sound, yeah. and Neil, if you could just play the sound again, like without the sound, right? Just look at, look at Dak's face. Look at this smile. He is so happy Wait, to Dak be oh, Trey. a Trey. Trey. Yeah. Trey. He's so happy to be the third string quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, if you you can just show see it? it. You can feel the happiness and the emotion in his face. He didn't smile this much in San Francisco. No, be, it's not just <laughs> because he's in Dallas. Look at how happy he is. He's, yeah, he's he, at a press conference. He's, he's, it's he's not late. just because he's in Dallas. It's because he's not in San Francisco. I will say this. Yeah. He does look like a guy that just threw four touchdown passes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, he's the third string quarterback. He just got traded from the team that drafted him yeah. third. And he's so happy. Happy. And that tells you a little bit about what was happening in yeah. San Francisco with him and how happy he is to be in Dallas. But that also takes off. He has the pressure off. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's no Big pressure. Time. I can come in and learn the system. I can do the things I need to do. I can be the person I need to be. I can be myself. That's the whole That's yeah. the whole. Let me add time. one thing to that. We also don't know what Jerry Jones said to him. Yep. And oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And here's the thing, because the, the, the takeaway from the Jerry Jones press conference the other day when they announced the trade was that he might pay dividends yeah. now, yeah. Ooh, this year, yes. not three Hello. years from now, right? Exactly. So there's a good chance Jerry Jones said to him, look, you're going to get a chance here. Mm -hmm. You're going to just be patient, mm -hmm. do what the coaches tell you to do. I didn't sign you to never put you on the field, and I'm the owner. I can put you on the and field. And if the Dallas history continues to play out like it does every single year, there will be a chance where Dak Prescott goes through that lull and they need to win some football games, and Trey Lance might be seeing his opportunity more sooner than later. All right, we got much more football coming your way, including in Kansas City. Is there a major weapon coming back in time for the opener Thursday night against the Lions in Kansas City? We'll answer that question right after this. First in football, four big stories in the football world. We start with Kansas City. They are optimistic that Tony yeah. will be available for week one. We often talk about the lack of skilled players around Mahomes, not named Travis Kelsey. What difference can today's Tony make for the Chiefs, Craig? Yeah, yeah. first off, he's not going to be ready because he's never ready. Uh, if, if and when he's on the field, he's a difference maker. He's a, he's a different dude, a different talent. We saw it with the Giants, his limited Giant career. We saw it in spurts last year with Kansas City. Unfortunately, all that talent, he's got tons of it. Uh, we don't get to see it a lot. Because he's always got some kind of uh, injury. And normally with him, it's been the hamstring. Uh, barely played with the Giants. Barely played with the Chiefs. But he's one of those guys where you're like, wow, when I do see it, I like it a lot. Yeah. I just don't get to see it enough. So if you tell me he's back, I just don't believe it. I don't. Until I it see it. It reminds me a little bit of like when they, when they signed oh. Bell. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, yeah. what, what's Andy Reid going to do with him? And it's like, yeah, oh, nothing, not much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like, but, but I, I mean, I've seen this firsthand with the Giants. Yeah, you know. When he's out there, he's great. And he's healthy. We, he's dynamic. You know, he can do things with the ball in his hands that are extremely dynamic, which you love to see. But he's got to be out there to do it. And this is a special year for Mahomes. He doesn't have those bona fide wide receivers that we go into the season and know, like, okay, he's going to be in contention this year because of his receiving core and because of him attached to those receiving core. But this is going to be one of those seasons where Patrick Mahomes has to lift some of these younger guys up and, and raise their level of play and raise their expectations week in and week yeah, out. To he's make the only star quarterback in the league that doesn't have a top 25 running back or wide receiver on his roster. And he's guy. that good. Yeah, exactly. But every other guy we talk about, whoever the heir parents are, Joe Burrow's got two. Yep. Josh Allen has at least one. Mm -hmm. All right, Aaron Rodgers has one. Herbert right? has seven. Two has yeah. got two. <laughs> yeah. Herbert's got two. Burrow's got two. He's the yeah. only guy yeah. that they're like, oh, you a truck driver? You want to? <laughs> <laughs> you look pretty fast. You want to be a wide yeah. receiver? Yeah. And it works. Super Bowl yeah. champions. Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. so it's just he's that dude. He's, he's different than all the other quarterbacks, and that's why. I mean, 100%. I mean, he has that, that Tom Brady feel. He's going to elevate everyone that's around him. Correct. And that's what you need. It don't matter who, who you put out there. The, the elevation of what that quarterback brings and the, the, the competitiveness that he brings to the table 
it helps that offense as the, that much. You don't need a top 25 receiver. You don't need a top 25 running back because you still have Travis Kelsey. You have younger guys that can actually just add into that development part of it. Now, getting Kadarius Tony back would be significant because he's a different dude and impossible to tackle, and he would become a security blanket very quickly for Pat Mahomes, no doubt. We now move on to second in football, and we do talk about a – true top 25 receiver, and that is Jerry Judy. We have some good news. He is not placed on the short-term IR, meaning he is available to the Broncos if he is healthy to play. That's good news. That means they can have him in week two, week one, week two, week three, week four, as if they could not if he was on the public. Yeah, look, I don't think he's playing week one, nope. but it means that they think he's recovering quickly enough where he's eligible possibly to be on the field week two. Yeah. Uh, I'd be shocked if Jerry Judy's on the field Week one, based on what they said was a severe hamstring pull. That would be weird to me. Yeah, Russell Wilson is hoping he can get that guy back as soon as possible. He doesn't have any wide receivers he that are healthy right now. He doesn't, he doesn't right. have anyone. And this is a big year for Russell Wilson and a big year for that entire Bron Sean Payton and that entire staff. So, I mean, this is their receiving core at the moment. Um, obviously, Jerry Judy is the standout. But a lot of guys that you're still looking to see who they are and still looking to figure out who these guys are. And Russell Wilson needs to come out and play well Yeah. because Jared Stidham played played well when he came in. Well, not just that. He needs, obviously, for them to have any chance, he's got to play well. To back up, you know, the promise that Sean Payton brings to Denver, Mm -hmm. he's got to play well. And now you're also saying he's got to play well with a wide receiving core that none of us can name, you know, the third guy on that team. Yeah, exactly. And that's the reality. And neither can you, by the way. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I saw go it. Go ahead. Yeah, Marvin Mills Jr. <laughs> <Junior. laughs> <laughs> Marvin Mills Jr. Don't know who he is. But hey, we don't know who he is. Good job. Great job, Antonio. Now move to third and football. Yeah. Staying in the division. Jimmy Garoppolo, we heard from him earlier. Now we hear about him on Josh Jacobs signing with the team. He said, quote, it means a lot. You could tell the atmosphere was a little different. Having him back, seeing him around, you could just see he's ready for football. Yeah, let yep. me just let me let me rewrite that for Jimmy G. That's what he said. Let me tell you what he meant. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Thank God. I don't have to carry this team. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Exactly. It takes the pressure off of Jimmy G. That's yes. what it does. I got yeah. a good running game. I can be a game manager instead of trying mm-hmm. to put the weight on my shoulders and get the ball down the field. I got a guy that can catch the ball in the backfield. He's my safety net. That's what he should have just said. I mean, just be honest. Yes. I would have been like, if I was Josh Jacobs, if you really love me, go up there and reconstruct that contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. See so you give me an extra year on this thing. Like, what are yeah. you talking about? Every single thing that Jimmy G is feeling and the positive vibes that Josh Jacobs is going to be there week one is everything we are talking about in regards to Jonathan Taylor and Indy and what Anthony Richardson yep. wanted to say. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, thank God I've got a stud <laughs> running back <laughs> behind me. I don't have to do everything. Yeah. And that's it's, the difference. It's 2,000 yards of offense. It's yeah. It's like 2,000 yards of offense right there over, right. over the course of the season. Yeah. They, they, they're missing in with the Colts in Indianapolis, and they have right now in Vegas. Yeah, players. and look, if I'm Josh Jacobs, you know, you're running uh, to try to you know, get over 1,500 yards rushing, over 2,000 total again with the knowledge that when I do it, these bastards are just going to franchise tag me again. again. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be doing this all again. <laughs> That's what Man. they're going to do. Moving on to fourth you and football. The Chiefs will be playing the Lions on opening night, and that is a long quote from Lions safety Tracy Walker. I'm going to boil it all down by saying this. Guess what? Dan Campbell's one of us. He does burpees with us, and that is what turned the team around. I mean, we saw a video of him doing burpees. They weren't even real. They didn't even look good. They were His good. burpee technique well, is worse I than thought, I thought burpees. I thought, I mean, they used to call it up down. They didn't know they was called yes. burpees. Yeah. 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 They, they called burpees. gotten soft. See, look yeah, at that. Look he doesn't even get all the way up. <laughs> he barely takes his hands off. Hey, bro, that's a bad burpee. He's supposed burpee. to jump hey, off the ground. That's burpees. a bad burpee. Come on, Dan Campbell. What are you Stand doing? Come on, Dan Campbell. Oh, my God. Where's the real burpee? I, that's I, not a burpee. I live by the Tim Hardaway school of thought when it comes to burpees. I never heard of burpees until... They told me about burpees. <laughs> <laughs> and, I and now I've learned what they were, and I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. Uh, but, look, uh, he is a beloved guy because of his personality. Mm-hmm. He did play. He knows the sport. Yes. Yep. And he is, you know, there are certain times 
when a coach just fits a city. Yeah. I really oh, felt like that Rex here. Ryan just fit the blue collar, you know, Jet fan mentality, How about Tom right? Coughlin? Can we talk a little giant? Tom Coffin never fit no. until he won. And then all of a sudden then he's in a favorite. But there's no mistaking the fact that in a blue collar city like Detroit, that guy works. Agreed. A guy yes. in a jacket and tie doesn't work Correct. in Detroit. Agreed. That guy works. Allow yeah. me just to, anytime we talk to Dan Campbell, we have yeah. to hear from Dan Campbell yeah. and kneecaps. We let's, do. Let's just listen to what really what really melded him to the city of Detroit, one of his early press conferences. <laughs> we're going to kick you in the teeth, mm -hmm. all right? And when you punch us back, we're going to smile at you. And yes. when you knock us down, we're going to get up, and on the way up, on we're going to bite a kneecap off, like a, all right? Like and we're going to stand up, up and then road. it's going to take two more shots to knock us down, all right? And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a UFC fight. <laughs> yeah. 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 It never gets old. I mean, there's a famous story that Brian Dable tells where uh, he was in the room when uh, Campbell was being interviewed mm -hmm. uh, for a job at one point, and Dan Campbell destroyed the office. <laughs> That he Shut was up. being interviewed in, and no joke, was grabbing chairs and setting them up as players to show how he would call defensive play. <laughs> and at the end, they were like, "My man, you got the job. Yes. Can <laughs> you? We have, <laughs> we have a whiteboard. <laughs> we have a whiteboard right there, coach. We have yeah. a whiteboard right there." So, yeah. And I bring that gaps. story up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Brian Dable tells that story, and the reason I bring it up is. Uh, you know, in, in today's uh, sports world, yes. there's something to be said of uh, being unwaveringly unique and true to who you are. Correct. Like, well, this is who I am. You may not like it. Correct. I don't care. I'm not going to change who I am yes. for you. And that's why a guy like Dan Campbell works. Because what you guys do, and it's, I wish it was the rest of the world, too. You guys can spot a BS artist in the locker room oh, like time. that. Yeah. This guy is legit. Yeah, I agree. And I think the, the special part is, and you've obviously seen a ton of coaches, those position coaches are incredible. Like, yeah. those are the guys that really make the mold of your team and make them who they are, and they always come with unique personalities. Right? All right, listen, oh, yeah, we, we got much more to do, including the question that is going to bother everybody in uh, western New York, and that is, are the Bills in trouble? The answer, of course, is yes, but we'll walk you through why right after this. No Von Miller. Welcome back to the Carter Show. We have your headlines. The biggest news of the day is that man right there, Dalvin Cook, after attending the birth of his son, attended his first Jets practice. Oh, yeah. Craig. He looks better there because uh, the first picture, I thought that was a linebacker. Nope. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Uh, he hasn't been practicing. Yeah. He hasn't been practicing. Well, he you know it's like when you have a baby, team. right? Uh, you got, uh, here's the best part. He did what every man wants to do when they have a baby. You good? Yep. Baby good? Peace out. <laughs> gotta go to work. I gotta go. Gotta go to work. Gotta go to work. Yeah, he ain't taking a nine month federally. <laughs> He's like, Daddy's gotta go to work. Exactly. Uh, look, it's great. It's um, you know, it's it's another part of this amazing off season for the New York Jets. They are, I know we overuse this term, all in. That is a franchise that is all in. They've done a great job managing the cap. They get Aaron Rodgers, he takes less, blah, 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 blah. And now it's put up or shut up, right? Yes. You've done everything you can do to build a team good enough to win. Now the guys that get paid a lot of money to play football have to go win, and that's what this is. Yeah, well, that's the biggest thing. Go ahead, Crow. Go ahead. I mean, it's just like uh, I think about it. You know, having bringing Dalvin Cook in, you had a guy like Brees Hall that came in off injury. But uh, not only that, but this guy's going to be able to help Brees Hall be a better player, understand the game a lot better, be able to understand how to, how to fall, how to take tackles, how to un understand that the little things that you got to do as a running back to be that complete player. And I think that's what Dalvin Cook is coming in for. It's only a one-year deal. Yep. So it's, like you said, it's all in. I'm ready to go win. I have Aaron Rodgers. I have the weapons on the outside. My defensive line is stout. I got a good secondary and I got a good linebacker. So this team is built to win right now. And honestly, it feels it get that it has that aroma again of that 2009, 2010 Jets. Oh, it smells yeah, like 2010 Jets, doesn't it? A little you bit. Know, little going bit. around. A little bit. I'm not doing that. It just feels like good. It's not doing that. It feels good. It smells like, 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 like a better quarterback. You know? <laughs> so, just being real. Sorry, Mark. Yeah. Just being real. Yeah. 
Yeah, shout you out made, to you made a really good point earlier, Crow. And one thing you mentioned is just Dalvin Cook. He can run the ball. He can catch the ball. But he can also block. And we talk about right. the one weakness with the Jets is the offensive line. Mm-hmm. And what really helps is when you have Aaron Rodgers calling the protections and you have a running back back there who's done it over and over for year after year after year. And that's going to help protect Aaron Rodgers. Not yeah, plus he's coming off a healthy season, played every single game last yeah. year. It's, what, multiple years, over 1,000 yards. And he's been through it. So, unlike Brees Saul, who only played, what, nine, ten games, yeah. uh, here's a guy that's had a career mm-hmm. of success and playing in big games for the Minnesota Vikings. I love it. And it's put up or shut up time now. I mean, yeah. uh, the team is constructed. All the playmakers are there. Yes. That first month of the season is not easy. Those well, it just got games, easier, though. Uh, <laughs> well, for week one, I guess. But those yeah. first six games, I mean, yeah. look, you got Buffalo, Dallas, New England. Um, that Obviously, New England's defense is always south. Kansas City, Denver, Philly, like, you're going to get tested very, very early on in this season, and we're going to see what this New York Jet team is made of. Yeah, the good news for the Jets is you look at the first six is that they only have to play against two really good quarterbacks in the first month and a half, so that should help what's going to be an amazing defense. But I know the focus is that Dalvin Cook wait, finally think, practiced with the New York Jets. Who am I missing? Yeah, you're missing. Wait, 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 can Josh we establish the two? Josh yeah. Allen, Josh Allen and Patrick Allen. Mahomes uh, and Jalen Hurts. Patrick Mahomes Jalen Hurts and, uh, and, Josh and Josh Allen. And Jalen Hurts. Not so sure about Jalen Hurts. Not so sure about Jalen Hurts. Not so sure about Jalen Hurts. We're not doing this. You can say not so sure about Jack Prescott. That's fine. But you have to be sure about Jalen Hurts at this point. He's had one great year. Now, out of three. Okay. Now, I think Jalen Hurts is rookie. going to be a great quarterback, but we live in a world where yeah. you do it once, that don't mean nothing. If you had to bank on Jalen Hurts or Dak Prescott having the better year this year, who would you bank on? Jalen Hurts is on a better team. So, you, yeah. Jalen Hurts is who you're saying? Yes, okay. I did say Jalen Hurts. Okay. Let's, uh, yes, okay. let's go to headline number two. Damn it, and let's focus it. on week one matchup against the Bills. Just got a little more interesting because our second headline is that... Von Miller has been placed on the pup list, meaning he is not available to oh, the Buffalo Bills until week five. Really? Now, this sounds to me a little bit like load management. They're like, we don't need Von Miller early in the season. We need him in the playoffs where we desperately missed him last year. No, that sounds like a guy in his mid-30s who had a terrible injury last year, and he's not fully back from it because he's in his mid-30s yeah. and he plays a violent sport. You know, this is not news in Buffalo. Everyone expected this to happen for whatever the reason might be. He's not 100%. They're kind of holding him back for a couple weeks, figuring they were good enough to win enough games. They were 5-0 and last year yeah. when yeah. he went down with the injury. But from a Jet fan perspective... <laughs> <laughs> Everything's from a Jet fan perspective. Yeah, it, but look, it, it, everything it, is from it, a Jet fan perspective. Everything. <laughs> but I like this with Von Miller. I mean, if you watch some of the practice clips of him warming up, I, I, I don't even think he's going to be ready for week five. Really? I mean, that's just the honest truth. With the injury that he's had... The way that he's going through the motions, I mean, you can tell the way he's just walking through and jogging and doing the warm-ups. It, it doesn't seem like he's going to be ready for a week five. Now, to be six. fair, it is five more weeks from today. It is. But I hear what you're saying. But I, I, it's yeah. just a movement. It's just a, come, coming back from movement and also the confidence part of it when you're yeah. going back into it. Look, they're Trust a him. different team when Von Miller went out. And yes. you, uh, to be fair to the Bills, they didn't lose the game in the regular season, right? Yeah. They ended on a 5-0 five, uh, five and oh streak going into the playoffs there. And then we know what happened in the playoffs. Played lousy but beat Miami and got embarrassed against the Bengals at home. But their production is drastically off yeah. in those last five games from a standpoint of getting to the quarterback mm-hmm. and hitting the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Those are significant numbers. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think with a guy like Von Miller, you look at those like those moments, right? Those big time moments in the game, those third and long situations where the other team has to make a play in the playoffs. Like he's the one going at the quarterback. He's the one that typically makes that big play. Like right here. Like Last year, play, like this is the times where he comes in and makes these plays. I think this was two years ago. It makes these plays against big time moments, against big time quarterbacks. Yeah, that's what you need Von Miller for, not for Week Three against whoever. You know what I mean? These are the moments that the Bills specifically yep. need him for. Those moments in the play. Look, the Bills are going to be a, a very good football team. They've got a lot of talent. No one disputes that. Mm-hmm. Defensively, they are very good, especially in that secondary. Mm-hmm. You know, but there's a window, and that window's never opening. It's usually closing. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a big year for Josh Allen, career-wise also, because he did take a step back last year. You lose you lose Miller for, for whoever knows how long, but they also lose Edmonds for the entire season. Not a household name, but he was a great linebacker for them, and they haven't replaced him with much, relying on Matt Milano a lot. Moving on to third headline. This one's interesting. I believe in Bell Belichick. 
I have faith that he knows what he's doing. But right now, currently, as we sit at this desk, they have one quarterback <laughs> on the roster, and that is Mac Jones. They have cut Malik Cunningham. They have cut Bailey Zappi. Craig, I have a simple question for you. Yeah, the answer is, uh, let me guess, no. What's he doing? Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. Uh, in my I world, don't. this is Bill Belichick playing mind games, trying to build up his young quarterback in Mac Jones. You know, a lot of people thought Bally Zappi outplayed Mac Jones in the two games mm -hmm. he started last year, but they are committed to Mac Jones. Listen, this is the same guy that tried to get Aaron Rodgers this offseason, right? They, they brought in five different veteran offensive players. They didn't sign any of them to try to help out. Ezekiel. So, in my mind, this is a way for him to say, Mac, we believe in you. You're the guy. We believe in you so much. There is no backup plan. So, don't get hurt. <laughs> And we know that doesn't bode well in the right. NFL, period. Right. So, I see them making a move at some point within hours, apparently. I mean, I'm yeah. warming her up. Yeah. Warming yeah. her up. You can't I mean, I'm warming the stage, too. But, uh, everything's cracking. Right here. I mean, it cracked like three times. It cracked like three times. <laughs> you guys are looking warm. No, it's crazy. You're throwing the ball. What do you people know about Victor is that he's a lefty? <laughs> no, no, but it's interesting to see where they go and just who they decide. I think – I think it's going to tell a lot when, who they decide to be that backup sure. when they make that decision. It's going to tell their plan and who they feel. You know, but they Jacoby forward. said something that I, I've uh, uh, subscribed to as well over the last two decades, and that is if Bill Belichick says it, it must be right. Right? We've all yeah. kind of felt that way. I'm not down with that Thank anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Like, there comes a point where we respect the success, the Super Bowls, first bout Hall of Famer, not even arguably greatest coach in our lifetimes, blah, blah, blah. But there's also some pimples on that resume, too. And I think they're starting to show more so now than they ever did because you don't have Tom Brady to kind of <laughs> make Tom the Brady. pimples go away, right? Yeah, and Tom I Brady. think that's what you're seeing right now. You're seeing the end of Bill Belichick's career, and God willing, it's not going to end well. And when you make a decision that the only quarterback you have on your roster eight days before the season starts yeah. is Mac Jones, I got to question you now. And that's what we're, we're also do. we're so sitting around being like, well, what are they going to do? Oh, they're going to pick up Colt McCoy. You're trying to tell me that Colt McCoy is the answer? No, to this? he's You'd not. You'd rather have Colt McCoy than Bailey Zappi? Would you? We know what Colt McCoy is. Bailey Zappi's young and has shown some some Black. promise. You don't bring in a Colt McCoy because you respect. He's been on 19 different teams. He's had a 20 year career, so he'd probably pick up the offense pretty quickly. Yeah. And if nothing else, he'd be a very competent you know ball hander. Yeah. Offer. Ball hander offer. Here, you take it. I don't but to Belichick's credit, he's never yeah. been an offensive guy. Yeah. He's never been an offensive minded he's guy. He's a coach one day. That defense is going to be stout. That defense is going to be ready to play. That defense is going to get after the quarterback. They're going to understand the schemes and how to get after the quarterback and play well on defense because Belichick will have him ready. Yeah. He's never been the offensive guy. And no, that's why and they're going to get abused by the AFC East this year. And I'm going to have some s'mores and watch it all unfold. <laughs> and I'm going to have a big s'more on my face. Yeah. <laughs> s'mores. I'm a big s'mores guy. S'mores. Yeah. yeah. Wildly overrated. Yeah. Wildly overrated. We can have that conversation during the break. Marshmallow. We can have that conversation during the break. Right now, we're moving on to the fourth headline, and that oh, is. Hold on. No, move that. On. Time out. No, we are moving on. on. <laughs> we're, see that size is headline. See that? That's Jonathan yeah, Taylor. I'll that is not a sport. Hold we'll, on. We'll talk about the sports you in a second. Not, you, I'm yes, sorry. I can. They dropped the bomb. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, 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 they're uh, overrated. On this show, myself included, no one is allowed to make a defiant <laughs> statement defiant. and then say, move on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Trying S'mores to keep us on track. Are the only negative, it does get stuck to the roof of your mouth. Oh, it's, that's, yeah. That's, and that's the, the only chocolate, negative. But I love it. Chocolate, chocolate, I love it. Good, the chocolate of, doesn't a melt. A good glass of milk will help it. Yeah, the that's marshmallow always lights on fire. The but chocolate doesn't melt. Game. And it's just it's yeah. like, yeah, dad, yeah, just Now dry. you can move yes. on. Please, okay, Thank you very much. S'mores are overrated. It doesn't melt. You can tweet at me. He doesn't know how to melt chocolate. Okay. Maybe if you hold it over the fire longer, the chocolate will melt. In any event, you, you, you don't hold chocolate over the fire. You Jonathan put the mushroom Taylor, over the fire. Yeah, uh, Jonathan Taylor didn't get traded. Is that the Oh, now you, want, now you want to go back. Now you want to go back to the run now. Now you, now you want structure. Okay, Sorry. Craig. I see how this works. Well, Guess what? Me. He's on the buff list. Yeah. Here's my question. <laughs> he Vic, likes s'mores, yes. Victor Cruz. <laughs> how does this play out? Like, like, what happens next? Well, this is interesting. I think, I, I mean, he has no leverage here. I, I think he's in a position where, especially as a running back, 
he has no leverage. He's going to hold out and try to, you know, stretch this thing out for as long as he can. But I think as a player, as a teammate, you're going to be home. You're going to want to go battle with your guys. At some point, you're going to want to go back out on that football. So he field. plays football for the Colts. I think at some point, I think he gets back out there. Bro, disagree. <sighs> I, I don't know. He can't. Oh, I, 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 this is a big I, I, I and listen, it's not any point on him not affording it. I mean, right now he's going to make it for a million dollars. He's on the roster. Yep. He's on PUP list. It doesn't matter. That's guaranteed to him. Um, I just I just think they don't play him or he's not going to play until they, he get a trade into week eight. Yes, he's uh, he's going to be week five for the PUP for the P- 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 list. Yep. Um, so, so you he, think another team's going to pay him? I don't, it's not it's not even point not paying him. I just think he doesn't want to be in that organization anymore dealing with Jim Ursay. Okay. Like that's the whole thing. Like now I'm not gonna be a part of a team and I got to spill I got to spill over from the whole negotiation and you're telling me I'm not worth anything. Yeah. Like I don't wanna play for this team. I don't wanna play for this organization. I don't wanna play for yes, I love my brothers. I love you guys. I would love to be the battle football. Right now I gotta take care of myself for a man that has no respect for me in this organization. Yeah, look, first and foremost, he's gotta get that ankle right because he's gotta be eligible to play. And he's got five leverage. more weeks to That's do the that. Leverage yeah. Yeah. Once he's physically back and represents to the medical staff, I'm good to go, and they green light him to play football, which, again, can't happen until week five now. But by week five, you have to assume mm-hmm. he's ready to rock and roll. That's when it gets interesting, right? Yep. Right now, he can't play. So, I'm, I'm not, listen, one thing I know about doctors, uh, and I, I don't know your experience is, they don't lie. Yeah. This isn't, you know, 1980 college football down in Miami. The doctors are not going to put their, you know, their professional lives at risk okay. by saying a guy can go and can't go, right? Huh? So, what? so I'm sorry? <laughs> oh, Go ahead. Is there something, you, something you'd like to share with us, Mr. Kumar? There, there's doctors that, does that, that hurry up and put it out there. And say you, rush you out there when you're not supposed to be out there. All right, so the doctors they do don't necessarily lie. lie. They don't necessarily lie. You're saying again, one thing I know about doctors is they, they lie. I'm just saying, they lie. You, you got uh, some I, kind of shady just, McGrady doctor to say, I'm going to put my I'm reputation listen. at risk. I, I, but know, I, I don't I, think they lie, but I think there's some doctors are, that I've seen intimidated. that have. Can be coerced. Can, exactly. I, yes, I'm with you exactly. on that. They can be intimidated. Exactly. I, I will say they this. They say he's hurt, but he can play. The one thing I love about Jonathan Taylor, if you show that uh, video again of him just kind of walking around the complex uh, and you read the sweatshirt, uh, he's trying to uh, make people wear the stigma of playing for the Colts organization. And you just got to love the fact that he's rocking that right in front of Jim Ursay's face. It says, kick the stigma. That's Kick right. The stigma. Kick the stigma. So, and he's even got the Colt logo on it. So I respect that man a great deal. So, uh, Victor, I have a question for you. You keep talking about leverage that he has, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe him getting healthy could help that. But let's not forget about the other side of the table. If by week five, there could be some major running backs that get injured. Sure. You could see a team like a San Francisco. They could, they could, they could be like, you know what? I need a running back. I know Taylor is available. That that could be something that could make this happen for to put him on another team. Yeah, I agree. It has to be one of those situations on another team where there's a void or a void happens through injury where he becomes viable. He becomes a guy that a team is going to look after and want to make a trade for him. That, that, that could absolutely happen. Well, look, it would be interesting if you play that out. And, again, no one's rooting for injury, but use the Dolphins as an example. They don't have the best running back core where he most certs there. He's probably their running guy. back number one, right? And he's good. He's not Jonathan Taylor, but he's good. You have the Dolphins struggle out of the gate. And now you're looking at week six, week seven. Trade deadline's coming up. Maybe that forces a team like that to then up the offer to get Jonathan Taylor. Certainly on the table. I mean, you got no Buffalo, doubt. too. Yeah, you have, oh, yeah, you have Buffalo too. Yep. That don't really have a true. Can you trade Trey Lance for? Uh, a, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that, I guess that. Uh, oop, yeah, that'll don't be happening. Don't give me any ideas. Yeah. All right, it is Wednesday. Everybody's favorite Wednesday morning segment. A little something we like to call "What the d- Wednesday." Coming up next, right here on FS1. <laughs> what the. D- I've got a guy on staff who sends me topless photos of himself all the time. What the He wow. did a swim move on a fat nine-year-old. What the Stop the fight. Yeah, stop, stop the just, fight. What the She did try a backup sculpture that I've not seen yet. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> true to life, by the way. True to life. Uh, David Jacoby right there. Victor Cruz right there. And Antonio Cromartie sitting right next to me. It is time for... Uh, something we call, what's it called again, guys? What the d- 
All right, let's Wednesday. start. Wednesday. Thank you very much. In New England, uh, Bill Belichick supposed to be the czar of all things football. But right now, in the moment, he only has a single quarterback on his roster. And that guy's name is Macaroni Jones. As the Patriots cut Malik Cunningham, you never heard of him. And the Patriots cut Bailey Zappi. He won two games last year. So someone might say, hey, Bill Belichick. What the f- Are you shocked by this, Crow? Very shocked. Just very shocked. Very. It's, it's crazy now that I have just one quarterback on your roster. Yeah, just one. why? Yeah. Where's that coming I from? I think they're trying to build up the confidence How of Mac Jones. How about you, Vic? I think, I think there's something to be said about the confidence thing. I'm also like, what? <laughs> like, what are we doing? What yeah. are we doing? Like, and, and, and then you look at the waiver wire. Who's out there for you to go get? What veteran guy, which I assume you would want a veteran guy, who's out there that's been through it that you are like, okay, if something goes wrong with Mac, we're going to give him the key. Yeah, Mike, yeah. listen, my gut is that it's going to be Bailey Zappi unless another team you know, swings in and goes, ooh, he's the guy. Yeah. Uh, but you are all in on Mac Jones. It's 8.30 in the morning about, so I assume something's going to happen today that's going to re- rectify this over the course of the next yeah, few hours. Yeah, hopefully but not, though. I want to talk to you about this, com- <laughs> this confidence theory, okay? If I'm Mac Jones, does it really give you more confidence to not have a backup? Like, does that give you more confidence? It would for me. If you guys weren't here, I'd be much more happy. <laughs> I'd be much happier. I'd uh, be much happier. In my status with Fox, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I think that would give me less yeah. confidence. I'd be yeah. more concerned Anyhow, about the direction let's, let me going say in. it one more time. Yo, Bill Belichick. <laughs> what the f- all right, number two, Victor Cruz. Did you get that sweater from a Boys to Men video? <laughs> I'm sorry. That was just me. That was off script. But this is hey, old, Victor. Old Navy. What the? <laughs> hey, who cued that back there? <laughs> who did that? Sorry, Victor. Did man. you get it from a video? <laughs> it's the end of the road for one of us. Uh, <laughs> Let's go to a former New York Yankees center fielder, Harrison Bader, who was put on waivers by the Yankees. The only problem was the Yankees didn't tell him. Somebody on TV did. Here's Harrison Bader. Um, I was in the uh, lunchroom. I saw it on a uh, CSPN. I guess you know, I guess it popped up somehow over there. So that's how I found out. What was your reaction when you saw that news? Uh, like, what does waivers mean? <laughs> <laughs> You're a wow. Yankee oh fan. God. Your thoughts on the Yankees not telling Harrison Bader, who's not been a Yankee for all that long, only a year plus now, that he was uh, being waived. Um, it's just like, <laughs> what? Like, why? Why were the Yankees operating this way? We're a class act organization. Uh, go out there and have a meeting with this guy and let him know it. You said They're turn into the Mets. Hey, yo, Yankees! <laughs> what the? <laughs> That's why you should be watching FS1, not ESPN. There you go. It's as simple as that. You wouldn't uh, yeah. find out. Harrison You're watching Bader the right channel. also a big disappointment. Appointment for the Yankees since they got him. Uh, let me go back to the NFL. Jacksonville Jaguars, like all teams in the NFL yesterday, had to cut down their rosters to uh, 53 men. And among the cuts down in Jacksonville, Doug Peterson had to let his son Josh know that he had just been cut. Yeah, how does that conversation go, bro? That's a toughie. That's a toughie. What the? <laughs> By the way, I think his son's the one that said, exactly. Yo, what Pops, the what the? <laughs> yeah, to be fair, Doug Peterson did what every one of us would have did for our sons, uh, or one day if girls are allowed to play football for them as well, where you give them the experience. Yeah. You know he's not going to make the squad. It doesn't cost you anything to have your son there. It's a great thing. A life experience. Your son's with his dad. And I'm sure that Josh Peterson knew I'm not making the Jaguars. I'm not sure if he even plays football. (laughs) This was predetermined. I'm pretty sure they had a conversation there like, Josh, you're a great player. Love you, but you're not going to be on the Jaguars. Play it out for a second. If they didn't, Doug's wife, Josh's mom, is going to be a tough woman to go home to. (laughs) You cut our (laughs) socks. And Mrs. Peterson said to Doug last night, What the? (laughs) (laughs) All right, basketball season's only about two months away. October 24th, the season opens up with a big doubleheader. And the L.A. Lakers are already in preseason hype mode. They put out a mural. Of Austin Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> well, I'm just mural at just around Where? LA. It's in Los Angeles. And, and I want to be clear. Wrong with this? The Lakers authorized the painting of this mural of AR-15. I like it. 
Thank you. It's I not like it. It's not like it. Spike it, girl. That's at the end of the show. I'm not mad at this. Man. That is. I love story. this. Yeah, he's I'm he's like legitimately their number three option. Hey, yeah, like, he's like the. Oh, he's their like like number the three option. So the number three guy gets a mural. Yeah. yeah. Hey, he is might it? be number two. Going to the, hey, the way you go, the way the Lakers are formed right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for the Josh Hart mural in downtown Manhattan. I know you've been. I know you've been watching all the the FIBA games, Craig, every morning, and you've seen how he's been performing for the Team USA. He's looking great going into the season. When an American team beats a basketball team from Jordan, not Michael I don't Jordan. get too excited. Yes, it's not brand Jordan. It's <laughs> but, the young <laughs> LA Lakers. What the? All right, oh, this right. one's a little off script. I apologize for oh, that. No. Oh, they, oh, no. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I, I like it. I no one else on the staff there. likes it. That was new. Um, <laughs> they blindfolded a guy, and they put a banana in his hands. And the guy got really excited when he ate the banana <laughs> blindfolded. And I'm not quite sure why. But what, but what, <laughs> why? Yeah. What is the advantage or disadvantage of yeah. being blindfolded when eating yeah. a banana? So what is the point the of the blindfold? And Did that's he it. not I know it was I don't, a banana at first? I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, oh, why is he so excited? Not that is not an accomplishment. Eating a banana blindfold is not an accomplishment. Maybe for him it why is. Why is he chasing the clown? It, maybe for him it is. I don't know, <laughs> but hey, banana eating guy. What? what? A zebra? A zebra? I, I heard someone else said bed was mask. Banana. A zebra what? pattern bed mask of all the blindfolds. They, they should have let the bull go. So I'm just saying, of the three people in that video, there's two that yeah, I would have preferred seeing. All okay. right, never mind. Um, uh, there's. Right. Hey, yo, Craig! <laughs> what the? <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy in Oklahoma who I believe works for the uh, Sooners football program who unfortunately has a growth in the middle of his forehead, which one day he'll have removed. Uh, but he has decided to make lemonade oh, out of lemons. Yeah, this, oh, I've seen so, this. I've seen this guy. Jeez. I love Listen, this guy. Because for a lot of people, myself included, I oh wouldn't leave the house. God. Not only does he go with the funny mustache, he's using that growth as a sunglass holder, Crow. I like it. He got with the is funny it? face. What? what? No. This is it. He didn't choose. He did not choose to, to have that on his forehead. That is something that happened to him. Now you have to have that removed. Him. And no joke, it's like a growth. And I'm sure it's, it's not serious, but you have to have it removed. A, Listen, he's making the, making the most out of it. He's making the most out, out of, of his head. head. Yeah, he sure does. And for the <laughs> final uh, segment here of uh, WTF Wednesday, uh, final I segment. Say that <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to do it in reverse order. Don't show it yet. Antonio Cromartie. What the. Show the video. Mm -hmm. Explain yourself uh, to us here, uh, bro. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Explain uh, yourself. The arrow is egregious. Yeah. You're what? You put the arrow on me? No, no. <laughs> Craig, what, what the? <laughs> what the? <laughs> <laughs> the <arrow> was it <laughs> my fault? But who's number well, 80? Well, I'll though? take that. It was my fault. I missed the tackle, but I wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> okay? Look at I'm covering my man. I come off. My man is Kids, actually running this big right round. Yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah. I come off. Yeah. I took a bad angle. That's uh, that's Victor Cruz, in case you didn't know where. <laughs> I took a bad angle. Yeah, he won a damn salsa, damn dance in the he end goes, zone. He goes right into the I wanted to go kick the football it's out of his hand when I got to him. I know you so did. I so hard at that death logo. <laughs> <laughs> I do it so hard. One, one more time, just in case you missed it. That's Antonio Cromartie. That's Cal Wilson Cruz. was supposed to be outside leverage. I yeah. saw you already, too, though. I saw, like, before I broke, I saw you come off, so I knew I had to make a quick move as soon as Dude. I got off. Now, yeah, you yeah. told us yesterday, you were here, Vic, mm -hmm. that they knew exactly what play you guys were running. That's we run that yeah. play all the time. That was that was it. There was a third down play. It was a third down we play. We time. knew it was going to Victor Cruz the whole time. That's why we told Cal Wilson sit outside, sit to sit outside. We're playing right cover inside. two men. Right we're playing cover two men. Kathy, sit outside. Tells you to sit outside. Only thing you had to do was sit outside. It was, they would have thrown a ball right to him. Right. Yeah. Everybody wanted to do it. Uh, I think around. collectively we can say, yo, Crow! <laughs> what the? <laughs> so no, yo, Cal Wilson! <laughs> what the? So we're Cal Wilson's like, why am I trending on Twitter right now? It's like, well, what did I do? <laughs> oh, my God. Before we take a quick break, uh, do you want to give you the update? Trey Lance did arrive in uh, Dallas, Texas and rocked a uh, cowboy hat. And uh, he's a very, very happy guy. And he talked about when he first bumped into Dak Prescott at the cowboy facility. This is teammate stuff. Let's hear what he had to say. Yeah, I mean, he, he welcomed me with open arms. Um, th this morning was the first time I, I ran into him. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that meant a lot to me. Uh, I know it's, it's, this business is, is crazy. Uh, but for me, like I said, um, I'm, not, I'm not looking forward at all. I'm just really trying to take it one day at a time. And, and these guys obviously played at a very high level for a very long time. So nothing but, you know, obviously just tons and tons of respect for him, um, as I think he deserves and, and gets from across the league. 
All smoke aside, all the potential little wrinkles to this aside, yo, know, it, it says a lot about Dak Prescott. He has handled this really well and like a professional. He may be ticked off when he goes home and may vent to his family and his agent, but from a standpoint of being a really good teammate and welcoming a guy that in theory – might represent the future at your position. Mm -hmm. I give Dak Prescott a lot of credit. Not everybody handles it that way. Craig, this is a moment for the show. We're going to celebrate Dak Prescott for a second. Okay. You just did that now, and I'm going to say this. When, when We obviously know that Dak Prescott had a serious ankle injury. When Trey Lance had his serious ankle injury, Dak Prescott proactively reached out to Trey Lance, did not go. know him, just to say, I can understand. I've been through something similar. Like, you can get through this. Then he didn't know he was going to end up being his teammate. And that, that sort of gesture, just being a good human being, yeah. pays dividends down the road. Now they're teammates. They already have a rapport. You know, I think you guys can speak to it. My gut is that probably happens a lot more than we know about Big Oh, big Either wow. guys big share the same agent or went to the same school, or you have a friend that you know you want to reach out on behalf of. Big I'm time. sure that does happen a lot. Yeah. A lot, it does. I mean, players gonna reach out to different players. It's, just, it's also a respect thing, and also, man, when guys get injuries, man, we lock ourselves in the, in our own little hole. Like we we don't yeah. really talk to our teammates like that because we're so focused on trying to get back healthy, trying to do the certain things. But also, man, during that time, a lot of guys go through like. Depression doing it's that lonely. Yeah, it's lonely. Exactly. Because big time. you're by yourself. So big time. for him to reach out and do that, that that's just I compliment him. I have nothing but respect for Dak on that part. Uh, like you said, he didn't know he was going to be his teammate selfless. at the time. It's just it's just selfless. It's like that's what you're supposed to do. And look at how much better that makes the team now, right? It doesn't create a friction or it yeah. doesn't create a. a, a There's no a, quarterback a controversy exactly. in the locker room. And bringing in a guy like that for Dak, it might. Everybody saying, or everybody meaning me, meaning that this could be trouble for Dak in terms of Trey Lance coming in and replacing him. But I think it could also serve as the opposite as well. It could fire Dak up and be like, okay, I have to play well. I have to take my job seriously each and every week and understand that I got to play well in order to keep my job. Yeah. Because there's a guy behind me that's pretty talented that if I'm not doing well, they're going to give him a shot. I will say this for a guy that we've not seen a lot of, you know, injuries derailed the start of his career. And then, of course, Brock Purdy becomes a rock star, and he loses his job to an unheralded, you know, last guy picked in the draft. Trey Lance did look happy. He did. He did, did. He he did look happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, we'll get more to this uh, throughout the show there this morning. You got to wonder what Jerry Jones said to him when uh, he first spoke to him on the phone, acknowledging you're now a Dallas Cowboy. And that conversation is the one that we all need to hear because I'll tell you exactly what Jerry Jones is thinking in regards to how he feels about Dak and the comment that he made, which is this might pay dividends this year, meaning there might have been a conversation. He may not be a great NFL quarterback, but the dude's a crazy good athlete. Let's find a way to get him on the field. That's also possible, right? Very possible. I mean, Jerry's going to run the show no matter what. And, you know, Jared can go down and, hey, I need a package for Trey Lance. And they're going to have to do it. <laughs> right. That's just what it is. But it, I, just, I just feel there's not much dividends that's going to be put, put on Trey Lance this year. I, I don't think so. I, I just think you're going to give Dak a chance. Dak started messing up and put in Cooper Rush. You know, the only thing, only way Trey Lance is, is going to play is if they have the same effect of, I mean, say same same thing that happened in San Fran. Yeah. They, that's the third right. quarterback. That's Look, the only thing he's going to, that's the only reason he's going to play. If Trey Lance plays a snap at quarterback, the Cowboys season is a disaster Correct. this year. Yes. And that's yes. how you have to look at it. Anybody other than Dak Prescott, with all due respect to Cooper Rush being 4-1 and one last year mm-hmm. and the five starts he got, this team is built by Dak Prescott being a rock star quarterback. We got much more football coming your way. First and football is coming up. And yesterday, I witnessed one of the great moments in the relationship between pro athletes and us fans. You are going to love it right after this on FS1. Hey, I welcome back to the card show. Antonio, come on. <laughs> <laughs> He broke out the sprinkler. That's Victor oh Cruz. Uh, he left you hanging. Oh. Oh, almost, and that's David like, Jacoby yeah. over there. Long arms help. Before I get to first in football, something happened last night Uh-oh. in Philadelphia, and I loved it. Got to be honest about it. First, Bryce Harper hits his 299th home run right there. A bomb to deep right. And the Phillies right now are a team you have to worry about come postseason. And that dude is every bit as good as you thought he would be when he was 15 years old. But here's what I love. After the game, he acknowledged 
that he listens to sports talk radio <laughs> and he hit that home run for a random caller to a radio station in Philly on his way to the ballpark. Here's Bryce Harper. I was driving in today and, you know, I'm listening to WIP like I do a lot, um, the two o'clock hour. And uh, a guy named Chuck called in and he calls in a lot of his players. Uh, but I said, uh, you know, he was talking about our team and talking about me and stuff. And um, I walked in the training room and I was like, I'm going to go deep tonight for Chuck. Uh, that guy had me fired up, man. He went deep <laughs> for Chuck. Someone tells me Chuck was not being supported. Someone tells me that. Chuck was probably giving a little criticism. He was tearing him yeah, up. He was tearing him up. I wanted to go deep for, for Chuck. Chuck. Yeah. There's something you don't hear every day. No, not, I mean, some neighborhoods. <laughs> just not mine. But that being said, that proves what I've always thought. You guys listen. Of course we you do. You read. Oh, yeah. And you know do. what's you being kidding? said about you. 100%. Yeah. Just because I want to see the guy in the media room when he comes in if I can cuss him out. Yeah. <laughs> I was the king of that. I love it. Shout out to Jordan Renan. He would come in and like. He's a reporter that he covers reported football, New York, yeah. covers New York a lot, and would always have his take about, you know, not bringing guys back or like, you know, you've seen one injury, you've seen them all. We don't yeah. want them back, you know, things like that. And you come in after a two touchdown game. He's like, hey, what's Jordan, up? What's your question, sir? I'm here to answer anything you got to ask me. Yeah. Ask away. Chuck feels so <laughs> good today. Chuck feels so good Chuck today. Feels great. Chuck feels good. Chuck, 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 Chuck is so telling everybody awesome. he knows. He yeah. took the day off of work today. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He it's called him. Hey, he, he said my name. I'm good. That's You're it. welcome. I'm There's solid. something different in the water in Philadelphia these days, I'll tell you that. And uh, I tell you, I just want to say I'm sorry for all the things I said about you when I was on the radio in New York. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, trust me. I know, trust me. <laughs> All right, let's go to first of football right now. Uh, tons of stuff as we are eight days away from the start of the NFL season. Zach Taylor, head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, was asked about Joe Burrow as he gets ready for week one. Here's the head coach of the Bengals. Go. I think he has a very healthy body. What? Um, <laughs> and I'm encouraged by that. I'm encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? I just showed that my feet uh, and my cat. Um, am I on this camera? Uh, this camera? Yes. I'll go to this camera. Here's Zach Taylor. Um, Joe Burrow. He's like Joe Being Rogan. ready for week one. In, what are we doing? He has a healthy body. He has a, he has a healthy, healthy body. body. I'm body. very encouraged by that. Yeah, but uh, he here's a, the thing. The, <laughs> here's the camera shot. Yeah. Back up, Zach. First that off, he has, he's had a torn ACL. Mm-hmm. He had an appendectomy, and now he's got a torn or pulled calf. He does not have a healthy body. <laughs> Listen, man. Listen, he doesn't. But I'll say this. Cincinnati has done a great job of keeping Joe Burrow out of the media from his injury. Yeah. Only, the only thing you've seen for Joe Burrow is when he actually strained the calf or whatever he did to the calf. Just be, yeah. But at the same time, it's that's like. A, but just stop on that, because that's a very good point that here's a, one of the great quarterbacks in the league, right? Mm-hmm. The only guy not named Tom Brady to beat Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs, right? Yeah. And as he goes, so goes the Bengals franchise, and not a word about him from him or anything around him for the last six weeks. I mean, that's, that's awesome. I mean, that's what you want. You want to keep that. You want to keep it in-house. When you keep things in-house, things don't get leaked out like most people are the yeah. sources. Yeah. So people always yeah. have sources. There's no sources here. Well, right. everything, they, everything is kept in-house. They play the Browns week one, and if you're the Cleveland Browns, you don't know if you're facing Joe Burrow or not. Yeah, no. and, and, and that's, that's strategic about that as well because he said, is, is, is Burrow going to play week one? Coach Taylor says, We'll see. Well, I got. there's something to read between lines of that. I, I don't think there's a competitive advantage. Obviously, you prepare like Joe Burrow's going to play. Yeah. They let Trevor Simeon go yeah. uh, in the cut downs to 53. Mm-hmm. And for just, I could be dead wrong, but reading between the lines there, if you don't think Joe Burrow's going to be ready, Simeon doesn't get cut. Yeah. 100%. So my gut is that Joe Burrow plays week one. And regardless, if he doesn't play, that's a major disadvantage, obviously, to Cincinnati. The Browns' defense is planning for Joe Burrow. It also helps that he's playing in Cincinnati, too. Like, if that was a New York calf strain, he'd be, there'd be pictures of him coming out of the bathroom at his yes. house. Yes. We, we talk, Aaron Rodgers had a 
right. calf strain early on in yeah, camp. Remember, remember how we talked about it every day. Every single day. So every day. It helps that he's in the market that's a little off the We're radar. special. What can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let me go to uh, second in football here. Uh, Jacoby loves this story. It's all he ever wants to talk about. Um, <laughs> Nick Bosa and the Niners are still very, very far apart uh, on a contract uh, extension. Uh, look, Nick Bosa has uh, said, I am playing without one. San Francisco has acknowledged he deserves one. But uh, they uh, allegedly remain very far apart with uh, the season starting very soon, Jacoby. Go ahead. Um, number one, why am I being accused of loving this story? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sorry, sorry if I recognize Nick Bosa is one of the best, you know, edge rushers in the game. And we talk about Chris Jones every single day on this program. And Nick Bosa, also not yeah. him. I feel like he will play week one. But the reports that they're not close to me, I can't tell if that is just negotiating through the media or yeah. if they're really not close, he might miss games, which I think will be a problem for the 49ers. Yeah, no, I agree. I think they need him. He's one of those pillar guys on that defense that gets after the quarterback, that makes it difficult for offenses to game plan against him. And they need that guy. I, I mean, they need that guy on the field. Right. They have to figure out how to get this done and get him on the field along with that talented defense. Now, remember, he's set to make $18 million bucks this year. He's not yeah. a pauper. It's oh, not yeah. like he's making nothing based on his performance. And without getting too much in the weeds on it, the big difference between Bosa's deal and Chris Jones's deal is that Bose is still on that rookie contract. Yes. So whatever fines he's accumulating, they can make him go away. He never has to pay him as part of the new deal. Chris Jones, who you alluded to in comparison, those fines are real. Yeah. That has to be a part of the new contract. Do, yeah. He has to write that check whenever it's all said and done. 100. percent I mean, when you get Nick Bosa, that's in and the things that he does defensively. I, like I, he doesn't want to miss football. He loves football. I don't care what. He's going to be there for week one. I honestly and truly believe that he's going to be be there for week one. Uh, guys love him in the locker room. They want to be around him. They want him to understand like. The, Business side of it is going to take care of itself. You're still on your rookie deal. You're going to make $18 million this year. Deal is going to get done. Just come in. We'll do what you're supposed to do. And then I think that he will. And I think they're going to have success. Which, again, defense. what I don't understand for Chris Jones and for Nick Bosa and guys at that level yes. who, you know, are in shape and day one are going to go out there and kill it, why not just show up? You can collectively agree that you have a hamstring injury or my toe hurts and just be, be there. The sit in like, you know, the deal, right? Yeah, like, in, why not do that? I don't get that part of it. I don't get that part either. I, I'm not losing money. Because, right. the, because the absence of you being there lets the team know and, and creates an environment understanding, like, this guy's not showing up until he's done right by, you know, until, until that team does right by him. And I think that's the mindset. Because I held out, too, for a short time. But, right. like, that's the mindset. Your agent goes, hey, I'm going to hold you out now until we get this thing done. Also, your holdout you know I mean? was that's, different. That's you different. never made big money prior to that. Correct, correct. You know, undrafted free agent. Correct. You know, all that stuff. You, this was your one shot to make money where you could take care of your family. Absolutely. Uh, it's a little bit different when you've already made your $50 million. Yeah, that's, 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 and you do eight. <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> right. If I'm doing $18 million this year, yeah. I'm a job. I'm going to work like this. Early. <laughs> saw me walking in today. Uh, here's a third in football. Uh, John Harbaugh. Got to be one of the happiest dudes in America because he has the talent to win a Super Bowl this year. And he talked about the growth of this team in a short amount of time. Here's Coach. Just as a team, I think we've come a long way. You know, and that's what I'm pleased with. The coaches are pleased with. The players are pleased with it because they feel it in terms of execution. Now it's time to go see where you're at in a game. Now you don't know until you play a game. And then, then you start over again. You know, where are we now once you play a game? Yeah, and listen, that's right. We, it's always on paper, on paper, on paper. But there's been enough guys who we've seen translate on paper to real-life football. Yeah. They're going to be a very good football team. Not only that, man, I mean, what he means by that, I just want everybody to understand, what he means by it, they're starting to jail. Yeah. Like the mm -hmm. gelling part is the, the, the honeymoon is over. We're starting to gel. We're starting to get understand each other. We know where we need to be. We are starting to understand the offense. That's what he means. Now is just the point. Now let's put it to, together collectively so we can go out there and do what we're supposed to do and win these football games. Yeah, you got, I mean, I'm telling you, I, I'm going to be a broken record on it. This has the possibility of being the best offense in football. And I know we all yep. look at Kansas City, rightfully so, and what Justin Herbert's going to do out in, in L.A. with the Chargers, and maybe even the Jets are in that conversation with Aaron Rodgers. 
but when it comes to pure depth at wide receiver, a rock star tight end, and an all-world quarterback. That tight end doesn't get talked about enough. Mark Andrews. Opinion, Mark definitely in my does. Opinion. Yeah, but I think this team, I mean, they got world-class guys all the way around, and they have competitive junkies on that team like Lamar Jackson junkie um, Odell Beckham and Zay Flowers these guys love to work at their yeah. craft and love to just be a part of a football team and I think you're seeing that be infectious throughout the entire rest yeah of the I think they're going to be one of the more uh, entertaining teams to watch and their offense should be lights out when you head into a season we all look at the landscape of the league and usually there's about five or six teams that you can really see sort of competing for a Super Bowl mm-hmm. and I think that the Ravens with what they've done at the skill positions offensively they've put themselves in that conversation like mm-hmm. they're they're in the seven or eight teams that I would not be surprised if they won a Super Bowl, whereas the last couple years I didn't necessarily feel that. And I think what we've argued back and forth is the AFC North, the deepest division of football. You can make an argument either side, so we're not going to go down that road again. But the reality is that they're all good enough to make the playoffs, which is why that's going to be an amazing division to watch. And from a Bengals standpoint, you know, your first two games right out of the bat are divisional games. Yeah. Uh, Cleveland Browns is how it opens up. So I cannot wait to watch that AFC North and see them beat each other up uh, throughout the season. 13 to 6. Yeah. 13 to 6. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. And let me give you a fourth in football right now. My favorite wide receiver that nobody talks about, Brandon Ayuk on the San Francisco 49ers. Like everybody else on the Niners, was asked about Trey Lance being traded. Here's what Brandon Ayuk had to say. Not really surprised. Uh, I mean, it's still surprising uh, just because that's a close friend of mine um, that he came in. He came in here after me. Um, I've been with him this whole entire time, and then to see him go um, in what two seasons. Um, Yes, yeah, so I would say surprising in that standpoint. Yo, he's jacked, by the yeah, way. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys see out of uniform, you're like, I didn't know that was a hog. No, that's that's disrespect, man. Yeah. When did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> so he's like a slot guy. Hey, you know I mean? hey, he yeah. said he was going to change his offseason. He changed yeah. it. He, changed that dude is he was already jacked. pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah he's, for my money, one of the most underappreciated and under-talked about wide receivers in all football. He's a rock star. On any other team, he's the go-to guy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and it's going to be a big part of their success. But look, I think you guys know things are going to happen before the public knows they're going to happen. Mm-hmm. And the Trey Lance situation, because... Brock Purdy proved that he's a legitimate uh, star at quarterback. Kind of made San Francisco kind of tie their hands. Mm-hmm. You can't leave the kid there as a third string quarterback no. for a lot of reasons. And it was time to part ways, own the mistake. We messed up. We got very lucky that we found our franchise exactly. quarterback with the last pick of the draft. So we're good. But he's got to go for everybody's sake. Yeah, and Ayuk's a guy, this is his fourth year coming up. He's seen some things already in San Fran. He's seen Jimmy G, how that unfolded and played out. He's seen the Trey Lance up and down. He's seen the Brock Purdy surprise and how that's, um, you know, affecting this team now. So he's like, I'm not surprised. I've seen the business of this league in my short four-year tenure here. I've seen the business of how this league works. Yeah. And it's not surprising to me. Now it's surprising because that's my friend and that's a guy that I've built a rapport with since he's been here. But he's not surprised by the business aspect of this at all. Yeah, it is amazing, though, how some teams just can develop quarterbacks and some teams can't, yeah. right? If you go back in time, uh, whether it's Alex Smith or Colin Kaepernick or uh, Jimmy G and, uh, and now, obviously, uh, Brock Purdy, yeah. they know how to develop quarterbacks, which mm-hmm. makes it even more glaring that they couldn't figure it out with Trey Lance. Well, what I find interesting about this, I'm going to read way too much into this IU quote for a second. Yeah. Is you think about how we receive the information as the media. It was, it was Shanahan saying, I'll probably declare my backup by week one. And then it was 36 hours later, he declares Sam Darnold as right. the backup. And then 36 hours after that, Trey Lance is traded. Yeah. So him saying he's not surprised lets us know that what we find out is just a little tiny portion of what's actually happening in San Francisco because Ayuk himself saying he wasn't surprised, but it all kind of caught us by surprise, which makes me think that something you said yesterday might be clear, which is Trey Lance, it might have been obvious. The, right, the writing might have been on the wall in San Francisco for a while now. Yeah, and not only that, you know, you guys are human beings. Trey Lance is pissed, rightfully so. Of course. And I'm sure he's got a group of guys in that locker room that believe in him. Mm-hmm. So you got to get rid of him for the sanctity of the locker room. Yeah. Yes. Right? If yeah. he's there and Brock Purdy has a bad game, there are going to be guys going, yo, man, you should be playing. Yeah. Yeah. And that creates a problem in a locker room. we got much more show coming your way. It's the Late Show Headlines. Jacoby's got it. 
bottom, and it includes a great day for the New York Jets, and Trey Lance speaks as a member of the Cowboys for the very first time. It's all coming up right after this on FS1. We have the headlines. Welcome back to the Carton Show. We start with Trey Lance, who was <laughs> traded to the Cowboys from the 49ers. And just look at how happy he Woo! looks to be in Dallas during this soundbite. I really tried to not, you know, expect anything one way or another. Uh, but I, I can say that when I heard Cowboys, you know, I, I had a big smile on my face. Uh, I was very excited to, to be here. Yeah, for uh, all the reasons we've discussed. One, you get out of the bad situation in San Francisco. B, because Jerry Jones probably told you you're going to be my starting quarterback by Thanksgiving. Uh, so you're going to have another opportunity you know, to play in this league. Uh, San Fran had no choice. They made a terrible mistake, obviously, in giving up all the stuff they gave up for him. That's not up for debate anymore. And now this is an opportunity of Trey Lance is at a crossroads, right? Here he was going to be the, the heir apparent to take on uh, the San Francisco franchise, hopefully to a Super Bowl, and now he's holding on to his NFL career uh, as the third-string quarterback uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. But I'm telling you again, the devil's always in the details. When Jerry Jones comes out and says he might help us this year, someone needs to follow up on that. You mean as quarterback? Or do you mean as a slot receiver or in a trick play scenario? How could he possibly help the Dallas Cowboys this year? Which is why I would love to know what Jerry or Stephen Jones said to Trey Lance and his agent when they consummated the deal. Yeah, I agree. And I think if you're Trey Lance and even if you're Cooper Rush, you're sitting back and you're thinking there's always a time of year where Dak Prescott just seems to have these lulls. Yep. Whether it's in the middle of the season, whether it's you know going into the playoffs, He's always at a point where he kind of throws some picks, has some turnovers, doesn't look like the high-level elite type of quarterback that Dak seems to be at times. And Trey Lance is like, I'm right Now, here, to be right. fair, you know, they didn't cut Cooper Rush yeah. when they just right. got down to 53. Correct. Cooper Rush is the backup quarterback. Mm -hmm. And if there's one guy who should be upset, it's Cooper Rush. Agreed. Because you gave me a slight chance last year. I did my job. We went four and one in the five games, you know, that I started at quarterback. So Trey Lance shouldn't be on the field this year, but Jerry Jones is a different dude. Meaning at some point we are going to see Trey Lance on the field for the Dallas Cowboys. You keep talking about this phone call between Trey Lance and yeah. Jerry Jones, and we don't know what it was, but we know what it wasn't. It wasn't, you know what, we're so excited to bring you into Dallas. You're going to give the scout team a great it look. Was. <laughs> this, you know what, you're really going to be great. You're going to give the defense a great look when you're the yeah. scout team quarterback. That wasn't the conversation. Well, here's what's interesting. And again, I don't want to get too far in the weeds on it. We're getting ready to start football. But from a Dallas Cowboys standpoint, contractually, Trey Lance and Dak Prescott's contracts end at the exact same time. Time. Yes, they do. So let's see what mm -hmm. Dallas does over the course, really, beyond this year yep. when it comes to the future of that position. But I agree with what Vic said. I said it earlier this week as well. If you don't view this as a goosing of Dak Prescott to make him a little bit uncomfortable, then you're wrong. Well, he should have been he should have been already uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> That's just what it yeah. is. He should have already been uncomfortable. If you got Cooper Rush behind you, mess up. I can throw Cooper Rush in. Now you add Trey Lance to that. I don't think Trey Lance is adding more to that. I honestly don't be that. I think he's coming in, guys, that you, you still have to develop. Yep. You still have to get the, the, the offense down and understand what they need from it. And I think Mike McCarthy's going to do a great job of that. Um, now, is he going to be the quarterback of the future? Now, that could possibly be the quarterback of the future. You well, let me ask you a question round. on that. I, and I, I happen to be one of the few Mike McCarthy guys in America. I think he's a great head coach. And, uh, but how much time can a head coach spend on developing a third-string quarterback during an NFL season when he's got to focus on Dak and his first-team offense? Not much. Not, right. much. not much. It's okay. not much. It's not much, but at the same time, but that's why you have assistants. That's why you have assistant coaches that can help with the development and make them understand that. And to that Jacoby's too. point, he will be on that third team scout look team yes. coming into week one, and, and that's how he'll get his reps. They'll have plays in there that resemble the plays and the terminology of the Cowboys so, for him to learn. This is what you're going to hear because I know Jerry Jones. Uh, it's like a book, right? Remember a month ago? Ooh, Cooper Rush is looking great in practice, right? Uh, goose, yeah. goose, goose. Here's what you're going to hear. If the Dallas Cowboys beat your New York Giants on Sunday night, September 10th, 
and Dak Prescott, whatever he does, he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jerry Jones is going to say, I got to hand it to Trey Lance for getting our defense ready. Oh, yeah. Ooh. He did a oh, great yeah. job mimicking Daniel that, Jones. That goes wow. for four touchdowns, yeah. zero wow. interceptions, 300 yards, and Jerry Jones is going to go on his radio show and praise Trey Lance. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love where your head's at. Great I love where yeah. your head's at. Also, I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. So it would be awesome. Crow, you brought something up, and it seems like there's a pre-injury Dak and a post-injury Dak, talking about the ankle injuries, yes. that yeah. he used to be do a lot more with his legs. 100%. Now, do you, do you think that he needs to change that this season? Man, I, I think that he needs to just get back to Dak Prescott. I think he needs to use his legs more. I think when you're, what you're going to see from the offense now, you're probably going to start seeing the offense of him getting outside of the pocket more, how he have a running pass read, easier throws, getting the ball down the field when it's, when it's need to be. But I think Dak plays better and the offense goes better when he's actually using his legs to extend plays, to get the first downs and things like that. The whole objective of the, of the game is to stand in front of the sticks. Yeah. That's the whole. Let me get three or four yards every chance I get. And I, as long as I'm standing in front of the sticks, I can keep, I can control the game. I can control the tempo of the game. And that's what Dak brings to the game when he starts to use his But game. also, if you're Dak Prescott and you read all the newspaper headlines, you hear the radio and all that stuff, if, you, if I'm Dak Prescott this year and I got a choice, I'm going to throw a little 15-yard out which I don't not his well. strength, not his strength. <laughs> or, or I'm going to run for five or six yards. I'm running. Yeah. Because I know full well, as soon as I let that ball go, it's going the other way. Yeah. I'm running. Which is to your point, you're going to see him run the ball more. And I think that. I mean, I think I think what you're going to see is when Mike McCarthy was in Green Bay. Well, happened with Aaron Rodgers. You got him outside the pocket yeah, a lot yeah. more. Let the ball go down the field. Make his reads. And make easier reads the ones that's in front of him. I think you're going to see some of the same stuff with him against outside of the pocket because he's athletic as I don't know what. Use it. Use it to your advantage. And once I can use that to my advantage, now what it starts to happen is defenses start to suck up more. Now I can get the ball over your head. Now if I'm throwing the ball down the field, what does I do for my running lanes for my running back? I can open up, I can open up things and use my play action things yeah. and everything else more. So now I think I'm going to see more boots. I'm going to see more nickets. Uh, coming from the Cowboys, you give him that run pass read and then let him on the ball. So. Yeah, those rush, that rushing yard stat is a real stat. Yeah. I mean, yes. you look at that and you say, wow. And you look at this, the success that was attached to those first three years is really beneficial. And you can see how it was paying dividends for that football team. In the last four years, he hasn't had those great years. He hasn't had those types of mm-hmm. uh, Dak Prescott years that we were used to prior to. You know what I mean? And by the way, real quick on Dallas, you know, our favorite cowboy this preseason, Deuce Vaughn, yeah, the dude. five foot five inch running back team, out of right? Kansas, made the squad. Made the team. Oh, Super, Bowl. Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. Sorry, Eagles. Yeah. Sorry, 49ers. Right. Deuce. Yeah. We got five Deuce on there. Five. It's like Bryce Young making the Carolina <laughs> fans. Oh, my God. Yeah. Moving on to our second headline, and that is not just a new face in Dallas, there's a new face in New York, New Jersey, and that is that smiling face right there. Dalvin Cook is also happy about being in a new uniform. Let's listen to the new running back, the Jets. Yeah, now I feel like I'm part of the Jets now. Now I feel like I'm part of the team. It's just like, man, I've been, I came in for a few days and I had to go back home and spend some time with the birth. Then I came back and I was on the side just trying to, you know, get back from just sitting in the hospital. And it was just a lot going on. Now I get to dig deep into you know the playbook, you know, get familiar with the guys in the huddle, and just have fun with this, with the guys I got in the locker room. Man, I'm ready to go. Listen, I know, I know it. I've done it four times. You can only change so many diapers before you <laughs> yes. got to get your ass back to work, <laughs> honey. I wish I could stay, but you know, I got, got a job. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> There's only so much value a dad provides yeah. to a newborn. Yeah. Let's just put it's it like also that. a reason why uh, diapers are sold next to beer in every supermarket in America because men have to go on that late night diaper run. Might as well get a six pack of beer. Uh, look, uh, a few things about Dalvin Cook. He makes the Jets a much better football team because he's a legitimate star at running back, both mentally and physically. As you guys were talking about, he's going to come out of the huddle. He's going to know, and he's going to make everyone around him better, Mm -hmm. much like uh, Aaron Rodgers is. The other part of it is why you can't listen to all these anonymous sources when it comes to guys maybe signing somewhere. The Miami Dolphins were never close to getting Dalvin Cook. But everybody thought when he left New York after visiting the Jets and went down to South Beach, where he's from, that he was going down there to sign with the Dolphins. He went there because he was about to have a baby. Yeah. And he's been there because he had a baby. <laughs> All right? Now he's with the New York Jets. His first official practice with the Jets. You guys have experienced that. 
It, there's a big difference between standing on the sideline, walking through in shorts, and putting pads on and running plays even in practice. That's why he's saying, now I feel like I'm a real member of the Jets. I'm getting dirty. I'm getting tackled. I'm on the field. I'm sweating with my guys. Definitely. I mean, I mean, this is an exciting part of it. I mean, you're getting ready for the season. Uh, you have a guy like Dalvin Cook that brings the, the football IQ as Aaron Rodgers. Right. Understands that. And when you have a running back that understands what the quarterback wants and I can get everyone else lined up also, it makes things a little bit easier on the offensive side, too. But you got a guy that can block. <laughs> it's a great block in the, in, in the backfield. Catch the ball out of the backfield. Um, you know, can, can be a home run hitter. Not only just him, but Brees Hall, too. Brees Hall, you got two home run hitters at yep. any given yep. time yep. that they can make that one cut and it's gone. Yeah. You can make the argument, other, other than self-inflicted problems and turnovers and penalties, the Jets are an unbeatable f- uh, football team right now. They've got arguably the best it's defense so in all football. Unbeatable. 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 Who said unbeatable? You just, you said, just said it. Said it. <laughs> That's right. Unbeatable, unbeatable football team right now. The only way the Jets lose is if it's self-inflicted wounds. Yeah. Dumb penalties, bad turnovers. No, like the Cardinals lose when they show up. They That's can true. play their asses <laughs> off. They lose. Uh, and I'm telling you, Dalvin Cook being there and it being real now. Yeah. Woo! I'm, well, hey, real, I'm sorry, real quick, Josh. What's the over under on Jet wins this year out of Vegas? You have any idea? Uh, nine and a half. Is it nine and a half? Nine and a half. We talked about it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a firm believer that successful teams and teams that go deep in the playoffs and make Super Bowl runs have a good balance of veteran guys that can still play and young guys that are talented. Mm-hmm. And I think the Jets right now, you look at that official makeup of the football team, cool. they have a good balance of veteran guys that can still play and that have been there and, and can bring the young guys along and have young guys that can play a high-brand, elite-level style football and can do some good things. Yeah, the Jets were 7-4 and four last year with Zach Wilson, Mike Effin White, and Joe Flacco as their three quarterbacks, plus Chris Strepler got a couple snaps there as yeah. well. Oh my God. They're not winning 10 games with Aaron Rodgers and Dalvin Cook and Alan Lazard and the best defensive line in the history of football. <laughs> they also didn't have Brees Hall. They didn't have Dalvin Cook at that point right. as well. Even, now, yeah. is it nine and a half? Thank you. So the over-under is nine and a half. I do not wager because I cannot do it responsibly. I'm a compulsive gambler. But for those of you that do wager responsibly and recreationally, over. <laughs> <laughs> Heading to your number three headline, over. and we stay in the AFC East. This time like it is no-brainer. Mac Jones. After the moves made yesterday, Mac Jones now under the sole quarterback of the New England Patriots. They cut Bailey Zappi, who started games for the Patriots last year, yeah. and Malik Cunningham, who had flashes of brilliance in the preseason. you got to stop with Malik Cunningham. He's a this nobody in the makes NFL. What no sense to me whatsoever. What is Bill Belichick doing? What is he well, up to? Well, yeah, I've been thinking about it for the last two hours since we first brought it up at 7 o'clock. Oh, you've been thinking about it. Oh, <laughs> oh, welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome to the show, Craig. Welcome. Yeah, it's good to have you, buddy. Good to have well, you. Man. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank yes. you. I'm just thinking about this to myself uh, during breaks. And I'm like, why are we so up in arms that New England cut Bailey Zappi? Like, he's not Joe Montana. Well, it's more about Mac being by himself and no backup more than it is by Right, him, but obviously. to be fair, they're going to have a backup quarterback at some point so. before September 10th, right? I hope so. Wh- whether it's Bailey. <laughs> yeah, I hope Matt, so. Matt hopes so, too. <laughs> yeah, like, whether it's Bailey Zappi or Colt McCoy or, or whomever's out there, uh, or, you know, Carson Wentz or whoever, right? So it's like, oh, my God, Bill Belichick cut Bailey Zappi. I would too. <laughs> uh, you know what? You just brought up Carson Wentz, and I could actually see that. Happening. I could actually see that. I happening. Know, happening. Until you uh, said it, yeah. until yeah. you said it, I could actually see that happening. He been thinking about that the whole wow. time. Now there's a report that the Patriots have no interest in Carson Wentz, which is why I think they might sign Carson Wentz. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, but you get my point. Like obviously, we're overreacting to it because Mac Jones isn't that good yet. Mm-hmm. As a professional quarterback, he's had some success, to be fair. Did make the playoffs as a rookie. I kind of regress. We don't blame him because he had, I mean, Matt two Patricia. incompetent coaches in his ear and Joe Judge wow. and yeah. Matt Patricia as offensive coordinators. They will be better having Bill O'Brien yeah. running the offense, but he's not a world beater. So you say to yourself, you know, is Bill Belichick losing his mind yeah. where he's going to go into the first weekend of NFL football and all he's got is Matt Jones. And that's a fair question now. Yeah, really big, time. Yeah, it's, big it's, time, fair question. It's, it's a, 
it's interesting to see where they go because I think the person they choose to be his backup will tell a lot about how they feel about Mac mm. and how they feel about the quarterback position on this football team as a whole. Yep. Go ahead, Jacobs. Final headline. Yesterday was a self-imposed deadline for the Colts to trade Jonathan Taylor. They did not trade Jonathan Taylor. They put him on the pup list, making him unavailable to play football for them until week five. Yeah. So, Victor, I'm going to start with you. Mm -hmm. How do you see this playing out over the course of the season, given all the tension between the franchise and the player? It's interesting. I think he's going to wait. To, he's going to stress this out to the latest possible moment. But I think at some point, the competitor in him and then him trying to create some sort of leverage for himself, he's going to have to play. He's going to have to come out there and prove that he can play, prove that he's healthy again to raise his stock, to raise his value again so that he can get out of there so that another team can say, oh, he is healthy. He put some good things on film this year. Let's give him a shot. Let's bring him into our program because we know he doesn't want to be a cult anymore. Yeah, it's a bad situation for, for Taylor. A, he plays for a dysfunctional franchise, which starts with Jim Irsay and the ownership of the Indianapolis Colts. The other part is that he is coming off ankle surgery. Like yeah. They didn't invent that part of it. Yeah. And you can debate back and forth, can he play, can he play. But I, I, I don't know how you possibly mend this fence now. Yeah. Meaning yeah. at some point by the October trade deadline, and they're normally not a flurry of trades in the NFL. It's not like other sports. I just don't know how he plays for the Colts when he's healthy. Mm -hmm. Now, he's got no choice yes, he if he wants to make his $4 million bucks and be in the NFL this year. And the Colts do control his rights. But uh, I think what will happen, uh, the best scenario for Jonathan Taylor is he comes out of week four healthy. He's now activated for week five. And there's another team that thinks of themselves as a running back away from making a run, whether that's Miami, Buffalo, uh, whomever that might be. And then he gets an opportunity to be traded to not just any team, but a team that may have a chance. And another thing is, are teams willing to give up what the Colts are asking for? If you yeah, think you're time. a running back away from being a Super Bowl contender, meaning that your first-round draft pick would be late 20s, early 30s, yes, I would make that deal because I know what this guy is. He's a legitimate top 10 running back in the NFL when he's healthy. Another thing is, you got to think about this. If I'm if I'm going to get traded, my thing is, okay, and I'm not I'm not going to this team unless I know I'm, I'm going to get a new contract. That's the other thing, too. Yeah. Right. Which is I, I can't, yeah, anyone that trades for him, part. Part. Anyone trades for him is part. doing it with the assumption that they will. That they're going to get contract. I don't and know about that. I don't know. I, I mean, like, rent them for it, a year? because if I view I have a chance right now to win a Super Bowl, Super Bowl contending team, I'm bringing him in because it, it doesn't cost me anything next year. If it doesn't work out, I can walk away from Jonathan Taylor. If he's great and it works out, now franchise. I've got the right to franchise him. Well, this is, yeah. So he, you say he's going to come back to sort of help him put some tape on the field and prove that he can play and get some leverage. And, but, Craig, you made a good point. This isn't like Saquon and Josh Jacobs where they need to get a deal done, and then they get a deal done, they're smiling, showing up to camp, and they're happy to be there. Yeah. Yeah. If Jonathan Taylor takes the field for the Colts this year, he's oh. doing it, and he's going to be pissed. Yeah, except you have to yeah. remember, though, these guys who speak to better than you and I can for sure, that doesn't serve him well. He's got to come out and play really well yes. to get a contract. Yes. Yes. And, again, the Colts would still have the right to franchise him. Mm -hmm. Whoever he gets traded to will have the right to franchise him, which would make him $12 million bucks next year, give or take a couple hundred thousand. So it's a crazy story, and I do feel bad for the kid. I also don't know, honestly, if he's healthy. Yeah. I mean, maybe the yeah. Colts are I right. Mean, he he's out, not ready to play. Didn't he come out and say, I'm healthy? Yes, he did. And then his he back did. hurts, yeah. and they're saying, you hurt your own back. He's no, I got hurt. It's, it's a, his it's, health it's has a been whole, a question mark. It's a, yeah, it's a whole thing that's going we on. We got plenty more football coming your way, including one of the greatest pieces of sound from an <laughs> NFL game you have ever time. heard. Preseason game. And yes, Aaron Rodgers is the author of the greatest piece of sound and trash talking we have ever heard <laughs> in the history of the NFL. All right, last night saw one of the greatest clips in Hard Knocks history as my quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. You've seen some of the clips from their last preseason game there as they beat down <laughs> the New York Giants. But who knew at 39 years old that Aaron Rodgers had a top-level smack talk game? Well, Hard Knocks training camp with the New York Jets is streaming exclusively on Max. Let's all take a listen to how trash talk is done effectively in the NFL. Go ahead, boys. Bootleg out to the left, flipping it left. McCall Hardman. Bro, that's Jack. 
Show some respect, bro. Come on, what the fuck is that? Five damn sets? I don't even know who you are, bro. I don't know who you are. You don't? I never heard of you. Let's go, let's go. And the officials haven't separated Jihad Ward and Aaron Rodgers. Easy. Drops back, lobs one, front left pylon. It is caught, Garrett Wilson. Oh, it's a jet touchdown. Poke the bear, bro. I ain't doing that. I'm not going to hurt you. And I gave him the line that's uncome back with a bowl. I said, I don't even know who you are. And he said, he said, I don't know who you are. I said, both. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many loves on that screen. That's a good one. First off, the fact that he gave the line you can't come back from, which is, I don't even know who you are. There's this come back with the bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it doesn't make any sense, but makes total sense. The part of it that I think I like the most is that at 39 years old, he's bragging to the 22-year-old guys on the Jets roster, hey, look who I did. Let me tell you about how that. funny and mean that. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But and that's football. That's like, that's, yeah. that's football. You that's know? on every play of every 100%, game, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I'm the, more upset at Jahad Ward. What are you doing, my guy? Yeah, Jahad Ward's the uh, linebacker on? there for the Giants that five steps I'm after not, the ball giant, was out. But, like, that pushed was, him. yeah, that was, we got to have a little bit more respect for our for our team. What about Jahad Ward's come? Back. I don't know who you are. <laughs> you didn't know what to say. You didn't know what to say. He was in the moment like, uh, was, hey, I don't know who you are. Hey, I know you are. Like, what am I? He was like, Ricky Bobby, what I do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, look, that's the type of stuff, though, that you know, normally we don't get to see as fans, yeah. that as you guys can attest to, you know, happens on every play. And that's also the type of stuff, I don't want to overstate it, that builds camaraderie. 100%. Him telling the younger guys, man, I took care of that guy, right? Definitely. The guys love that Definitely. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. man, it's just, it, but it these brings out that competitive side. It makes guys like, man, oh, my quarterback talking trash right yeah, now? Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, when your quarterback starts talking trash, man, I make you feel so good. I mean, we're going I mean, to kick this kid. <laughs> <laughs> now, Eli Manning never really talked trash, but no, we yeah. talked all of it for him. Like, we, did all, we did it all for him. So, if Eli was in a spot where he did say something, what might he have said, if anything? Um, nothing. nothing, right? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Our offensive line was doing most of the trash talk. Uh, like, if Eli got hit late or something like that, you know, Deal would be like, what the F? You know, he'd be the one right. ripping guys to shreds out of there, but not In Eli your career, what quarterback was the best trash talker? Oh, Phillip Rivers. Really? Wow. really? Listen, the Denver game, when we played against Denver, I think it was 08. I think I believe it was 08. Man, he went the town on Jay Cutler. <laughs> 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 Man, I wish we had some clips of that. Man, he went the town. I mean, you know, Phil don't Like cut. talking on the Yeah, they're not in the field at the same time. time. Phil was on the numbers while they was on the field talking to trash to uh, Jay Cutler. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like bro, it's – it's like having that competitive side, but that's was something that Phillip brought to the table because he did it in college too. Yeah. Right. Like at NC State. But isn't he famously a non-cursor? Non-cursor. None. Wow, but that no takes curse. skill. No Real curse. life skill. I don't know how to how to tell yeah. somebody off without one little curse word in there. I, I might need about six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least one. Yeah. Meanwhile, you know, Aaron Rodgers, it's uh, it's real now, right? We got a little glimpse of him against the New York Giants. Dalvin Cook shows up yesterday uh, after uh, being there when uh, he had his uh, first baby boy, yeah. uh, Dalvin Jr. And and now it's real. The expectations are real. The difference here is that expectations on Aaron Rodgers' performance is what he's had his entire career because he's one of the great quarterbacks to ever play. Expectations for the Jet franchise, although you lived it a little bit with Rex Ryan in the back-to-back -back years mm -hmm. with Mark Sanchez's quarterback, is new and different. Yeah, it, it is new and different. You can feel this team is a different brand. Even from a year ago, this team feels different. Yes. The way they're approaching games, the energy that you see on the field is different. I was at this game. I was watching them pregame. They got a different bounce out there. You yeah. know what I mean? They just got a different energy that they're playing with. Obviously, being a hard knocks, like, those things kind of amplify that a little bit. But I think this team has a different bop than they had last year, and, and we'll see if it pays off. And, right. again, uh, even, though, even though they ended the season with, what, five, six consecutive losses, mm -hmm. this team was good enough to be 7-4 and four at one point yes. without a quarterback. So imagine you're a Jets fan, Craig. Just imagine a hypothetical hmm. scenario in which you're a big Jets fan. <laughs> and you wake up on a day like today and you're watching the Carton Show and you get the news that Aaron Rodgers was talking trash to the Giants. That's yeah. amazing, right? Dalvin Cook was at practice yesterday. Yeah. The Patriots have one quarterback on their roster. Yeah. And Jonathan Taylor did not go to Miami. Yes. 
<laughs> pretty good day for a Jets fan. Pretty good, oh, that's pretty good day for a Jets fan. <laughs> Which is why I haven't stood up once today because exactly. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> You had to do it. I'm too excited. You had to do it. <laughs> Keep that football right there. Oh, my God. Keep that football right there. I think I'm having another baby right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is the deal. Yeah. I've never had a preseason like this as a Jet fan. Yeah. Uh, so you just cross your fingers and hope that they come close to living up to what we think is possible. Well, last time it was on Hard Knocks, we made it to the SC Championship game. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. It, 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 we had a 13-year drop, man. It, it, it's time for that, that table starting to turn. And I think when you add Aaron Rodgers, Dalvin Cook, and you got the weapons on the outside, man, it's something that you can be excited about. But now it's time to not just have it on paper, but now it's time Now you got to do it. Now you got to do it. Yeah. So, Giants-Jets is week eight? Is yes, it is. Oh, there we go. Right down. Down. You know, right down. Down. Game together eight, for eight, sure. Eight, all right. Yeah, can't wait yeah. for that one. <laughs> all right, before we get out of here, uh, real quick, like it or spike it, let me start off on the streets of New York City. Jimmy Butler who's having a great offseason, oh, yeah. by the way. Oh, Playing yeah. pickup basketball with kids just because. Yeah. Uh, you just got to love that with Jimmy Butler. Like I it or spike it. Like it. Love it. Yes. This, love is, it. this is the best. Right. You can't guard me. You can't guard yeah. me. <laughs> Get off of me. Uh, yeah, so real good. quick. Victor Cruz's best play of his career. Happened against Antonio Cromartie. Like, <laughs> like it. Not like it. Me. <laughs> Do not like it. Yeah. Do not like it. <laughs> uh, and this hurdle right we here. Love it. We yeah, love it. nope. Yeah. We love By it. By the way, totally unnecessary there. Yeah. And before we get out of here for the day, uh, Jacoby loves s'mores. Like it or no. spike it. <laughs> s'mores are like like it. It. Like wildly like overrated. It. I'm not saying they're not good. I'm saying they're love overrated. It. We'll see you tomorrow. Overrated. Do you mind goosing for us real quick? <laughs>